Like you gotta be really patient with people because a lot of people will let you down, but you can't get mad. I learned that real fast. Patience is a virtue, you guys. Yeah, we yeah. gotta be patient. We can't be rushing into things because what happens when we're rushing into the street? A lot of people end up crashing along the way, you know? Um, you gotta be patient, you gotta take it slow, take it day by day. Things if, if it's meant to be, trust me, like it'll come to you as long as long as you guys have that patience. It's meant to be. You know, but um um you can't be negative. You know, because every individual around the world is just different. Um, when it comes down to personality, race, um, um, city, location, anything. So, um, well, we, we're very humble. We're not about the money. You know, we're just, I mean, we are here to pay our bills, like, just like anybody else, you know, but... Um, we're here to make a difference. Yeah, you know, to, you know, I really made a good point. You know, one thing you guys got to learn and right now get it through your head. It's not about the money. Mm -mm. Okay. Like get, get money out the way, you know, because if you're worried about money, you're in the wrong business. You know, you got to do what you love to do and you got to do it mm -hmm. how you feel like you want to do it. You know, and if at the end it doesn't pay off, like you just got to keep trying and trying because we're trying. You know, you might see us like in a lot of stuff, but we're still we're, we're still on the way up. Like yeah. we still haven't reached the top. We're still trying to uh, make it in this industry. You might see me in a lot of stuff, but it's because I this I love to do this. This is what I love to do. Like I I just fell into it. Like I get to be myself. If I, I don't gotta do this on the street no more, I could just do it on the on the screen and just you know portray portray reality. Yeah, like, you see, um, me before, uh, I'm going to be honest with you guys, before the whole Cholos try, before, before this whole social media thing, like, I never knew in between the lines, like, into movies, like, knowing a character, maybe a celebrity would pass me by, I'll be like, oh, is there any other individual? Me, I was a caregiver. I was taking care of my mom. She's an elderly. She has arthritis. You know, it, it takes a lot of um, effort, like, to kind of, like, be there for them, you know? He took me out of my box. I was like in house arrest. Not I, not like I really was, but I was working from home. And I got this, to see this whole new world, you know, just by trying out new different things. Like, I'm you a went, Latina. You went to Canada, no? No, nah, I didn't go to Canada. Alaska, right? <laughs> I went to Alaska. Oh, Alaska. And it, but Alaska has like this beautiful like air. I, you know, and I know it's hard to even like acknowledge that to say like, oh, what the hell does the air have to do with it? It's the air that kind of like in LA or just in Cal like or certain parts of California, the pollution is just so strong that we hard we can't really breathe as as easy as we supposed to breathe, you know? Because over there in Alaska, it's just so organic, so fresh. It's, it's like a beautiful fucking feeling. Oh, sorry for my language. I have, <laughs> I cuss a lot. No but anyway, no filter. I'm self learning, but you know, I got to see the world in a different way. My family are very old school, very very authentic. Um, classic so all they wanted me to do is for, work from nine to five nine to five nine to five and I've been doing this since I was 14 I lied about my age when I was 16 but um um I tried working and trying out different things and it gave me like this personality like wow like there's a whole new world out there you know um my my advice is just to try different things every single day because we as Latinos we get adapted to a certain box that we're just that we want to do the same thing over and over. Like when we go to a restaurant, we'll, we'll probably order like our, our favorite food, enchiladas, 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 you know? But we got to try different foods along the way, you know, to get that new skill for us to adapt to, you know? Yeah, so, so being in this industry, like I know you guys want to be in the film industry and it's going to take you places because they need camera people everywhere. That no, we need Latinos, you guys. We as Latinos, we are strong. We are so strong. Like, we like the system kind of puts us in this box to have like this fear to not process. But we do need to be out there. Like, closed mouths don't get fed, you guys. We gotta speak up to to eat, you know, our way in. Because um, being Latino is hard already. Being a female is even harder, you know. So. And the just, chola Latina. Even just hard. being tatted, you know, honestly, like, cause I'm, I'm all tatted. They do block me from certain films because um, we could get sued, you know. But it, it's hard for us. It is stressful. But 
dust that shit off. You know what I mean? Stress is bound to come. The fear is bound to happen, but knock that off. You know, we all got that first step into getting into this industry. Just, just keep going forward, you know, create your own lane and fuck what people say. Like I'm a, I'm a, I'm very blunt. I'm sorry. I got to say, it, you know, I got to cuss somewhere around there, but, <laughs> but yeah. I'm, it's just me, you know, it's just me. We, we got to, we got to push ourselves forward. You know, we Latinos, we're stronger and we, you guys don't know what you found, just stay positive, stay positive. And if it's negative, use that to create a positive because all that is skills. Yeah. And you know, a lot of people think that it's easy for me because I got tattoos and they think they're always looking for cholos in every movie, it's but hard. it's really hard. You know, people think that, um, that I don't know that I, the only, the only reason, Reason why I'm in a lot of stuff is because I'm really with people. Like I'll blow up, but now I realize I gotta really chill because it's, it's like people people will let you down. He's you know? just staying humble. He he's not putting a price in his in his personality. You know, because a lot of people have put in prices in their personalities and characters. They've been in this industry for more than 10, 15 years, and we've only been in the industry for five. Like we came out way bigger than what they've been going because they the other people have put prices on their on their on their check. We do it either for exposure or for for people to hear the word, you know? Cause honestly, like a lot of people have been negative. Like I don't know what it is. Like they put people down sometimes and I I don't know. I don't get that. Like I feel like there's money printed out every day. We all got the same 24 hours. It's up to us to use it because we got to carry our own weight. A lot of us expect for others to, oh, look, you know, come help me. Like, nah, we got to be independent and just keep moving forward, you know? Yeah. You know, um, I think we're going to watch a movie, uh, Hermanos. I'm not sure you guys already saw it. It's on YouTube. You can watch it for free. Um, mm -hmm. Up to this point, after one 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 year and a couple months, it's, uh, it's already at 12 million views. You know, and that movie is uh, it made a big impact in the in the in the community, just everywhere. Like a lot of people can relate to it. And I'm actually working on part two this year, so I don't know if you guys do camera work. Maybe you guys can help us um, be on set and just you know get some behind the scenes stuff. But um, or even just be there, you know, mm -hmm. or even hands be on, learn it. Like you know, just pause because that's what we do. Mm -hmm. We go to productions and we we learn from the camera people in our off time. There's a lot of downtime so we get to learn you know by seeing it so hands-on you, you know if you guys want to you guys are welcome to come yeah we're gonna need a lot of people and with your skills um i heard that you guys are students and are trying to become a part of this industry and we're part of something big like this movie hermanos like nothing comes close to it and to tell you guys a backstory about how we got the movie hermanos going it was a 17 year old kid that reached out to me and told me that he wanted to make this film, but this kid didn't have any money. He wanted me to do it for free. And me, I was thinking, well, why should I do it for free? Like, you know, but I believe in this kid. I, I looked at this kid like, well, if I was 17 year old, years old and I come up to me and asking like to make this movie, you know, I Yeah, it was cute, you guys. You know, like we, he was, we were like, okay, so what's the rate? He invited us to eat, we, we never, been with a kid inviting us to eat when we got there we we learned that he was only 17 years old he was him and his friends he's like unfortunately there's no ray you know we were like oh damn you know <laughs> we're gonna be filming a whole future but mm -hmm. so so i went in doing this movie without getting paid like mm -hmm. i did it out of out of my kindness i guess i still don't know what i was thinking but he even told me that he reached out to so many people and everybody said no nobody wanted to help him and then he even told me he needed he needed more people and cars. And I was like, okay, well, I'll help you, but you got to pay them. So I went into making this film without getting paid just to help them, help out my people. And look at the end, it paid off so much. Like this movie has opened up so many doors. And for many people, not just us, but for so many of us that been in that situation and got to see that like, oh, damn, you know, like things are possible. Like without like making plans, just go for it. You know, like it'll land. Like it's the universe, you guys. It'll come to you. You know. Uh, and one thing I gotta tell you guys: get a passport. <laughs> because um, you know what? I was supposed to be on the show Narcos, and I'm pretty sure you guys are. 
to be an um, path forwards. Little things like that. You gotta have all your tools. You gotta um like you gotta sharpen all your tools in this industry to make it, you know? But you see, like, like I said, again, it's the universe, you guys, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be, because I was supposed to be in China for uh, a roller skating um, commercial. I'm glad I didn't have my passport, because you know how this whole thing, coronavirus is going on? I'm glad I stayed here in Cali right now. So you see, I mean, just get it when, when you guys have a chance, you know, maybe keep it, but but if you guys don't have it, don't put yourselves down. Don't feel lower than anything. Like things happen for a reason. When it's the time to come, it's the time to come. Just be patient. You know, live life, you guys. Don't be stressing it. It's not always about the money. Trust me, because what is money that can't buy is peace. It's We're not here about, to be living. You know, yeah, I, be I, happy. I can't stress that enough. It's not about the money. If you worry about the money, like it's gonna, you're really not gonna get anywhere. Like you, the money's gonna come, but. Sometimes you got to take passion projects and you never know where they can lead up to, you know, but one thing you do, um, like coming across is haters, you know, it sounds so childish. It sounds so nineties, but it's true. Mm. Like a lot of people can't accept the way, um, other people's come up. They don't want to see you doing better than them. So they start, you, you're going to, if you, if you in this to win this along the way, you're going to lose a lot of people, you know, because they don't like to see you shine and, and that's just part of growing. You got to let people grow, go that don't want to see you grow. Yeah, there's a lot of haters, you guys. I, um, the first year that I became from, um, the, cause I didn't know any better, you know, I, I was just knowing what I adapted to. I, he was used to it, I guess. He didn't, he doesn't care what people say, but I was never used to that. You know, like I never had haters. I never knew that I could grow into having haters the first year. And Cholo's Tribe was one of the first girls that like, came from like, guys, like, I was stressed out just because I had black hair. It was stupid, so childish, so dumb. And I was stressed out for a whole year. I had people coming to my house trying to beat me up for no reason just because of who I became, you know? Um, but one thing led to another, it, you know? I dusted off and I grew into having so much love now. Yeah, like it's all love. All over yeah. the world now. Yeah, it's all love. You I know? don't know about her, but me, like, it's all love. Like, I found out real quick that people, like, before I wanted to be the baddest, the baddest cholo out there. I wanted to, like, destroy everything. I wanted to get into fights. Yeah, he did. Like, it was violent. <laughs> no, yeah, I was. It made I was, him change. It made him change. I was really, I was really local, like, crazy, like, you know. People see me in the videos and they see me that I guess I look at the comments and they say I'm soft spoken that I look like I don't even I wouldn't even bang. But like, that's the thing that I don't have to portray that in the in the in the camera. I could just be myself, you know, but before I was like my mission was to be the the, the I was going to make history. I was going to like just blow okay. up. I was, I, I yeah, I was too I, OK. Involved. Too much violence. That was my <laughs> that was my life. That was, I thought that was my destiny. But when I did this videos. I realized that I don't got to do that. I don't got to be mm -hmm. the bad guy. Like I like that people saw me as a good person. So now that's all I try to do. Just portray like just me, just me without the tattoo, just me, myself and I like, that's what I portray. I don't got to be the, the, I'm still, I'm still crazy, but not on film. You say we were from South Central. So whatever we saw, we thought that violence was going to like take us up ahead. But you know, honestly, like we're here to protect our community. We're supposed to be here to protect our community as Latinos, you guys. Like, we can't be killing ourselves or anybody. Like, to me, it's just not like Latinos, Blacks, Whites, and Chinese. To me, it's just a human race. We're all the same. We're all, we all bleed the same. We just all adapted a different way. We all raised differently, you know? So it's nobody's fault. It's just that this is how the way we was raised. But we got to see the whole um, California, a whole different side. But we do need to be here to speak up on what we, where we need to be at. Cause Latinos, we're so strong, you guys. Like we need to have a president already. Like oh, we yeah, are, that'd, we, be nice. we, that'd be cool. Like, I don't know what's the, the Donald Trump thing. I think it's a joke or for, I don't know. But anyways, does that all. But I hope, I hope we come out like not this generation, but the next and so on. You know, we got to teach our kids cause they're our future. You know, maybe I could run for president. I think so too. You need a little bit of work, but yeah, for sure. <laughs>
president scar for president. <laughs> so. Okay, they, they have a question? You got a question? No. <laughs> Can I hear it? Um, okay, so my name is Sarayi. I go by Princess. Um, I'm Hi, I'm from Santana. I grew up in Santana. I graduated from the second lowest performing high school and like barely graduated. <laughs> like I had to do night classes, independent study. And um, well, I just graduated from UC Berkeley and I live in Oakland now. So I'm really excited that I'm able to join this because I was like, oh, no, they're going to come to my city and I'm not going to be there. But I'm here. <laughs> I'm you know, here. I'm to go to you one day, you know? Oh, yeah. It's happened for a reason, you know? Yes. We got to, we got touch and her territory in Oakland. <laughs> there you go. That's what it needs to be. Oh, oh. Um, and in the mission in San Francisco, it'd be cool to see y'all there too. But um, I, I just really resonated with a lot of what y'all said. And I'm really inspired by like, sort of like how y'all learned very quickly to shift and to adapt to like the new value system, how you're talking. Like, you know, like I resonated with that too. Like coming to Berkeley, it was like a completely different way of talking and communicating and like what, like how you show your strength and how you show like, don't mess with me is just like totally different over here, like in just different circles and not coming from that same place. So I was wondering like, if you could talk more about like that moment that like, what was that moment like? What was that transformation like when you're like, oh shit, like I don't gotta be the bad guy. Like I don't have to be like, the baddest to be like you know to to be like on top you could be on top in a different way because i because i i see like the personalities that both of y'all have and it's very cute it's very sweet y'all being together and like just like ex trying new things and the way you respond to them and stuff like it's just very interesting you know and i'm like it's trippy too because it's like i see y'all like my community and like my family you know like my brothers my cousins like you know when i look at y'all and i'm like my brother is a softy but because he grew up you know and he didn't have the same transformation or a different location as me he's still like this like you know macho like you know yeah, yeah. but on the inside i know like he he's you know like for example like when you were when um when you did that video like teaching the kids how to make the halloween candies and you're just so attentive to the kids like oh like do it like this and just very encouraging my brother's like that like that's his softness right there you know but he still has this like so i was just wondering like what it what if you could talk more about like that transformation for both of y'all like how did that how did you how did you notice that was it uncomfortable like you know what was it people's comments like what was it that made you have that moment and like what did it feel like all right well in my case, well, I want to say something before. Um, you mentioned that you got, um, you, you barely graduated and you did um, all these accomplishments. Well, you know what? I never got my diploma, you know, but I'm not saying you don't have to, you don't need a diploma because um, not having my diploma, it, I had to do a lot of hard jobs, like construction, like just hard labor work, you know, like I did all that before I got to where, where I'm at today. So it wasn't easy, um, but the so so stay in school okay um yeah so uh, other than that um the second i realized that um like people saw me in a different way or the second i knew that um i guess like i became known is when i i stepped out my house one day it was like i guess the videos went, were going viral before i even knew it i stepped outside my my house and then everybody everybody on the street was saying hi to me like like cars like ups cars um the mailman like just people driving and, and, and everybody's honking. I mean, I'm like, whoa, 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 what's going on? You know, like, and, and, everybody, and even, I, I even talked to my neighbors, you know, it's so crazy that we live in a world. Well, in my world, we don't even talk to our neighbors and my neighbors actually talked to me because they saw the video mm -hmm. and I was like, whoa, what's going on? And then I went online and then I seen that the bills were hitting millions and it was just in one day hit like 5 million. Then the next day, 10 million. Then the next day, 15 million by the end of the week it was like 25 million views like we we broke the internet and we were even on tmz but that's when i realized oh like people are looking at me people are looking at me now before i'll be like the bad guy i wouldn't want pe people wouldn't even pay attention to me or want to stay away from me you know but after the videos i was like oh cool and and i read the comments and it was all positive like people would really like me i was like whoa like 
this is different. Like that's when my that's when my whole life changed. I was like, okay, well, I'll be the good guy now. Um, um honestly, I, I will speak up a little bit on his because I've been knowing him for like 19 years. I'm honestly like, but we kind of like off and on uh, type of relationship throughout the years. Um, we got together because of the it's show. Total love. It's gangster love. His personality, <laughs> his personality was like way off, you know, like compared to now. Like now he's staying humble. But before he was like, oh, that, this, you know, like, like, you know, um, always um, in and out of jail. violence, in and out of jail. Yeah. And um, it wasn't hard. It was, I mean, it wasn't hard. It actually was hard, but the show kind of like, opened his mind to a different view to helping his people. Even, you know, to show the little smallest thing, to just mm-hmm. kind of create a different point of view, a different visual that it's not supposed to be like that, you know? Um, there's other ways to kind of show people that you can have strength, you know, because nowadays we're so stressed out trying to pay a bill or just, it's just hard, period. Mm-hmm. You know, um, we do got to go through that process to get that strength. Honestly, well, it, it, we just can't tell people like, hey, you know, like it's it's pretty easy to kind of um, hi, um, it was hard to just get into his head, you know. Mm-hmm. We had, yeah, I don't need coffee, you guys. I'm like, well, I don't really wake up this early right now, <laughs> but um, god damn, like um, I, yeah, it, it was hard. It was hard. It's, we're not saying it's easy, but we would do just by giving the advice. I wish that you guys could like just take my advice and just. Be positive, because if you do good, good comes. If you do bad, just expect it. You know what I mean? It's up to us to stay positive and just keep moving forward, you guys. Like, um, life is simple. Like, just appreciate the smallest little things, you know? Um, you, know you can't and, uh, think bigger than what it is. You know, back to what you were saying, like, the, the moment I realized, it's just moments after moments that you realize, like, that your whole life is changing the way people look at you, like, and one of the times was when the cops stopped me. Like, oh, yeah. you know, me, I hate the cops. Well, I hated the cops before. Like, I yeah. still kind of do. But, yeah. you know, a lot of times the cops will stop me and they'll recognize me from the videos and they'll give me, like, a little pass. And I was like, whoa. Like, and even other gang members, like, from different neighborhoods would see me and they wouldn't even trip. So that's when you know you're doing something different when cops and your enemies and, and just regular people are looking at you different. That That's when you did something different yeah we were we were actually like walking down this plaza where everybody goes throughout the weekend and you know usually the cops always pulls us over always either wants to give us a ticket like just because of how we look with the tat- with the tattoos and all that so they busted a whole we call it we, they busted this teardrop down the street mm-hmm. and pulled us over and we were like oh my god they're gonna pull us over in front of everybody at la live i don't know if you guys ever heard of that place but we, um they were trying to give us the respect and telling us, hey, we really appreciate what you guys done, you yeah, know? They, they got off just to take a picture with us. And, and to, me, that was <laughs> yeah. the, to me, that was like the most humblest feeling ever, like for a cop. And you know what? He cried, you know? No, and then well, like, just seeing him like kind of tear up, like off of happiness. No, well, I didn't cry. Happiness. I didn't cry. Like I, I got teary. Like, because it really got to me for a cop to just pull over and shake my hand. Like, that yeah, man, I thought it was cute though, like, like, you know? Like, that, that, that meant a lot to me because. Uh, the mm, cops like their their job is to go after people like me like you you won't really i mean i've seen santa ana i've seen how they get down in santa ana i've seen everybody like g up but in la it's a little different yeah you know? they'll, they'll tackle you down you guys i've got tackled by the cops mm. i got um men cops trying to search me and i know that there's not it wasn't supposed to be like that you know um but you know mm. it's just different now it's not like before um yeah, next wait, question. Wait. We have a question from Lisbeth. Lisbeth, do you want to ask your question? Yes. Yeah. Hello. Hi. Um, very nice to meet you. Um, I know you mentioned no's, um, and I was wondering if there was, like, I know you talked about, like, what things are meant to be. Um, a little bit of how you got to that point, and then if there was a time where you really felt like you had a big failure and maybe what you learned from it and how you overcame those feelings of, you know, struggling. Mm. Okay, well, um, well, honestly, like, the way I see it, I got to be honest with you, like, I think some things are meant to be, 
you know, I remember when I was a kid, I would say, I want to be a superstar. I want to be a superstar. Like, but then you grow up, you know, real life happens. Like you, you want to be all these things, but then you realize it's not like uh, in a movie, you got to uh, work, you got to pay your bills, you got to deal with real life. But um, some way, somehow it just happened. And, um, you know, I feel like it was, it was just meant to be like, I keep getting all these opportunities, but at this point, it's all work. It's all hard work. And like right now, I'm just like trying to um, uh, move forward and work with people just like, um, uh, uh, fight, uh, uh, I'm not good with names, but just like, like they brought me onto this and I said, yeah, I'll do it. I'll talk to some people. Like I don't really like talk to a lot of people like this in a setting like this. And um, it's different to me. So it's, it's little things like this that, it just, you know, elevates you. And I'm, I'm getting experience talking to you guys right now. You know, just, it's not something mm -hmm. that I do. It's not something that um, we're used to. I'm not, I'm definitely not used to it. You know, like, I'm, I'm honestly, like, kind of scared of social media. So maybe that's why you guys don't really see me on, like, posting things. But. She was in you, a uh, Cardi B music video. If you guys uh, watched the music video press, um, Cardi B is holding her head like this and pushing her down the toilet. Yeah, like, they, you know, they told me, you know, they were it's like, so cool. Like, do you want to work with this high um, major artist? I didn't know it was for Cardi B. I just showed up to, you know, pay my bill or whatever. But they were like, oh, so you're the girl that they're going to drown? And I'm like, drown? Like, I've never in my life opened my eyes underwater, you guys. So, yeah, so watch and that so music video. It's, press. A, it's, it's a whole, like, different... Um, dynamic like i guess like i was like you know what i can't say no it's cardi b you guys let her kill me not let me <laughs> i was like, like i guess the new experience let's do this you know when i got there um and they kept redoing it they just kept dumping me in this so, fake prop toilet so you never know where you're gonna end up in this industry you never know you're, you're never gonna know who you're gonna get to work with until you are there and a lot of these projects believe it or not they don't pay well that one did pay but a lot of them don't pay but you're going to end up meeting a lot of good people along the way and you network. Every time you're on set, you're there to um, network with people that have um, different resources. And that's for you to like, they want to use your resources, you use their resources. And that, that's how you guys all get Yeah, get, get connected, use as much info as you can learn. You know, practice makes perfect. Um, then you can bring your people in, you know, like just help each other out, you know. That's so I hope that answers your question. Uh, yes, thank I, I you. Was in I, I have a question. Um, so when you start out, a lot of it is networking and working for free. And as you go through your career, that's still an important part of being a creative person because you're always learning, like, like Mario said, from the people you work with. And the more people you work with, you pick up new skills, new tools, new ideas, new friendships. But I want to ask you, like when you guys started doing Cholos Try, that was like a, uh, an audition, right? Like a, you guys answered an ad for audition? No, no. Actually, um, I mean, to give you a little backstory, uh, I'm, I'm, some of you guys may have seen a video where I'm making candy roses. Mm -hmm. Well, I really do that too. It was like one of my little hustles I learned in prison. Mm -hmm. um, I got a call in the middle of the day if I could go do this, this um, reaction test. And um, it was only paying $40, you know? But the thing is that, they reached out to so many people in the industry that looked like me and everybody said no nobody wanted that job because it was all the way in santa monica and and it was only paying 40 bucks but you know what i needed those 40 bucks so i went to santa monica i did the reaction test got my 40 bucks and i was happy with that me you know too. so but then the video blew up but you see you could just imagine all those people that said no to those 40 dollars how much they regretted up to this day because i still keep hearing stories like that people were supposed to go and they never went but i took that risk you know i took that that chance of well i wanted those 40 dollars like i really wanted them but you see it, it led up to different things i got to go all over america i got to go to swamp to the to georgia and the swamps i went to florida like it, it's just like so much opportunities that i got just from taking that little thing you know, you know it, it'll work out just like even um exposure you know, it'll give you that exposure as well. It's not a, like the money, even if it's a dollar, you know, like mm. no, nobody wanted to get those $40 because it was a two hour drive to on the 405, you know, it's traffic hour. Nobody's like trying to deal with that. Mm -hmm. You know, when we got there, they were like, we were literally there for like six hours, I think, to make a video, you know, and yeah, that yeah. just became yeah, like, this whole 
look if you look at the first episode i don't want you guys to look at it but if you look at it i was dirty i had like long hair like it was kind of long i, I had a, like i hadn't shaved my muscle shirt was dirty like i went there like i was hungry i hadn't ate all day i was just there like you see i was struggling like it, it's real like if you look at the first video i was not i did not care how or like, even my first video you guys like my man i was tore up like i was like half asleep he was like only wanted me i didn't even know that they were gonna be recording and it was just first expression of wellness shots you know what um and we're just keeping it simple like the story is actually more um it's more uh how can it's more reality it's, it's more reality it's more dramatic like you guys don't know what we dealt with just to be on this video it's like it, it's a lot of industry bs that that goes mm -hmm. on and i'm gonna tell you guys one thing you know how i told you guys to keep your resources tight like you you get to meet people and you get to use their resources and you get to they get to use your resources and that's that's how you network well let me tell you guys something a lot of people are gonna let you down they're gonna let you down time after Real time close after people. time and, and and you're gonna lose a lot of people but you're gonna you're gonna stick with the ones that do commit ones that do want it and have the same passion as you and, and that's how you're gonna grow but don't don't be um don't be let down by the people that are gonna let you down because we're all human a lot of people say that they want it and when it comes they're like oh well let me go back to my job like this ain't working out like uh, whatever even though like you put your whole life in it and and, and all into this people are gonna let you down yeah and that's so the reality you, that's an important lesson because yeah that is something you're gonna experience because everyone has their other realities but when you put so much into a project and somebody just walks like that it, it, right. it oh, yeah. not that's to take all, it all the time all the time yeah. So let me ask you this. So once you guys started doing Cholos Try and you connected with Me Too, suddenly you guys did uh, mm -hmm. Cholos Try, Scar and Crafts, the, um, what do you call it, the Valentine's one was really cool. And I saw that you guys did a promo for On My Block with, uh, um, you know, for the, what is it, a, a Cholos Guide to High School. Can you tell us how those conversations started happening and your involvement in, in expanding the initial idea? Well, I mean, uh, the Me Too Network, we're actually the Cholo Spry is the biggest thing on their platform, and they tell us each time like they they um the network loves us and and they do promos and you know it's because of the Cholo Spry that they became so big and and they tell us each time that people love us. Companies were going to them to try to get us to kind of um make like either commercials or documents or just um just to kind of give our advice of what we thought as the people's point of view, because we were so real, like we had no filter. I mean, we just keep it real. Like yeah. why, why are we going to become something that we're not, yeah. you know yeah. what I mean? It's, it's all about keeping your connections tight. Remember you guys, you have to be really tight with me too, or with anybody. It doesn't matter how small or how big they are because somebody could be so small and later on become so big, you know, and me too reaches out to us because we're we're um we're cool i mean we're cool people and that's it but if you look at it closely there's a lot of people that don't work with me too no more and that's because either they were too greedy or their time has came and they moved on to other things but you know i love me too i'll do what i'll do whatever they ask of me because they're to me they're like they're they're, they're like family now and like i said it's all about keeping your connections tight so a lot of uh, just a positive attitude and it's it's hard work and it's 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 a lot of time and and especially if you're doing production you you kind of i don't know if you've seen that scene in la bamba where richie valens is recording his record and they have him do it like a hundred times it's like that with video too oh you know what yeah. actually you know well, i'm gonna tell you guys something every time we record something on the on the me too videos it's our reality like nothing is rehearsed like and you, you might think, oh, that's easy. No, it's really hard because they'll put me in the front of a camera and I'll be like, well, what do you want to say? And they'll be like, oh, you know what to say. You yeah, got you this. Got it. Like, and what? no, I don't got this. They always yeah, make us. Because they reflect back. And if we say something bad, like yeah, they don't we, reflect back like, oh, God, like someone didn't agree with certain things. But we were like, man, let's or, just. Or we might say the wrong thing and they, they'll still use it. Like, mm -hmm. like it's not, not, this is more reality than you can, the it's more real than anything out there. Like, I always thought that reality shows were fake, you know? But when I started doing this reality show, because they took us out. They they didn't tell us where we were going, what we are going to wear, what we are going to do. It they was just, everything nothing. was just a shock. Like, imagine mm -hmm. us 
being at a swamp, canoeing ourselves for four hours into a swamp and sleeping the night for over 60,000 alligators. I came home sick, you guys. I was so, I was nauseous. I was like, oh my God, like, this is not cool, you know? But it's, it's just like that feeling that you get and you're recording every second along the way. And I'm like, you know, trying to keep my makeup and like, <laughs> make like I'm looking like I look like a Teletubby. Like, it's not cool, you know? <laughs> I went no eyebrows at some point, you know? Just like, it's a problem. But, um, yeah, like, it's just, it's scary, you know? It's a trip, but... Yeah, and, first you know, expressions is, the, means everything the, to people. And, um, and, and you know, um, I tell people that um, I love Terminator. I'm actually a big Terminator fan. And you had mentioned how I, I networked with me too. Well, they knew that I was a Terminator fan. So for the last movie of, of Terminator, we actually got to work with the uh, Warner Brothers company and do a promo for Terminator. And they dressed me up like the Terminator. They put like a prosthetic on my face and that was like a dream come true to be part of a Terminator franchise, like an official Terminator franchise. So it was like, like this has led up to so many things. Like I couldn't, I, I'm living my dream right now, honestly. But let me tell you guys something. I'm living my dream, but it's not easy. And it is easy if you like what you do. You know, like my, I me, mean, like I always grew up to watching George Lopez being on TV until I got to work with him at the Chicano movie. And, and I'm he, like, he knew about oh us. my God, he knew about us. He's like, congratulations on your Charles channel. Like, oh my God, you know, like <laughs> it was pretty dope because he's a really humble dude, like off and on camera. He is who he is. You know, I got to meet a lot of people that I got to work with that I look up to. Well, they got to now, meet us. Ah. <laughs> i'm not i'm not if you look at i'm not sure if you guys follow me but i don't take pictures with celebrities like i i don't really do that like it's i don't not, either it's I, not me they're, like, they're just that's just like us you know but i mean i was very money. like wow you know george lopez i got to meet george lopez i got to meet you know all these other celebrities you know like he got to work with will smith that's someone i've been wanting to work with too but um you know like care um, Leslie Tyga, Drake, all these people we've got to meet, you know. Did you guys and watch some um, The Good Boys? You know the the movie with the three little kids. Uh, well, we got I got to interrogate them. One of the the little kids. Um, well, I was really happy to meet him because he was he's pretty cool. Yeah, this is a lot of celebrities that are pretty cool, you know. Oh, but you know one celebrity that I would love to meet is Arnold Schwarzenegger. I think <laughs> I'll I'll cry. I'll cry. I'll probably faint. You know, you know it's funny because um he saw a car on the freeway that arnold would that has the same car that was stranded on the freeway he really wanted me to go around the whole freeway to see if it was arnold <laughs> <You know? laughs> we were already stuck on time for two hours we were like no man we just gotta go he's just like us though you know but he's that's someone that he's been always wanting to meet for sure maybe one day you know another, we're still young. question from Elizabeth. yeah yeah, yeah. Hi, so um, we do live in California. So my question oh. is, how do you balance the reality of like bills and having to pay things, but also being able to take on those passion projects and work with people um, when, you know, you really want to work with them. So you kind of take that path of like being okay with exposure. Like, how do you find that balance? Oh, they're okay. calling me. I'm so sorry. Um, all right, just give her a second. Um, sorry. Uh, uh, well, about that um exposure yeah it doesn't um pay but it opens up different doors like i was i'm not sure if you were tuned in when i was talking about hermanos but i did that um project for free and it opened up so many doors for me and it it, it kind of raised up my level before it was just comedy but hermanos is more more drama so it took me to like a whole a more acting and and like i said look you're asking about yeah you got to pay your bills but me doing hermanos it led me up to being um in the movie honey boy with shia labeouf like from from that uh from that uh movie somebody saw me and they were like hey can you come be in this movie and that one paid really good so you could just imagine like i did something for free but then it paid off but it opened up that movie has opened up so many doors you know i'm not saying do everything for free like sometimes no. they could give you like maybe a, a little like you could ask for like maybe like some gas money or something. But Put it like this. If you're not doing anything throughout your day, fill that in, you know, cause that's what we do. 
if we're not doing something, like if we're having a day off or something, just try to like do something to kind of like give you that exposure. Even if you're not doing anything, I mean, you're not going to get paid anyway. You're just at home, just chilling, like go out there and do that free film. That's what we do. We want to help our people. We want to get the word out there that we could try anything, any little thing to just kind of like fill the spots. Yeah. And, and honestly, like, yeah, you, you're like, okay, well, what is he talking about? Like, doing it like without getting paid like how it even how how is that even like it's possible exposure. like like but it is possible like i do struggle a lot like it's still not easy for me but it has led up to where where i'm at right now like and getting, you're, you're on hentified now too yeah i'm on uh on hentified i mean i got some speaking lines and that one how did i get that one um well it was an audition but i mean it's just it, it just I mean you know getting experience and 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 yeah I mean it's just it's the experience you guys mm -hmm. you know sometimes it's not the money but it'll it'll give you that experience for free you know like you guys get to like acknowledge that practice makes perfect you know and we it's were also um, we were also featured on on my block like the one that just came out we we just come out for a second but you see we get to be involved in all these projects that like the whole world gets to see and then they see us in there and they get all excited and. So that's what we're doing now. We're just like, it's on to the next project, to the next one. And, and at this point, you see, now we do get to pay our bills and doing something that we love to do. Yeah, we get to travel, you guys. It's something that I've never experienced. I was just been to Tijuana, Vegas, and Mexico when I was living out there, you know? That's all I knew. That's all I thought I was going to do until I came out part of the show. I was like, wow, I went out here to New York. I got to experience it. I'm telling you, everything is so different. Everybody's so different too. I went to Kentucky. I, it was a little bad experience out there, but you know, there's a lot of race out there. There's racial stuff wars out there. They didn't want me out there. They, like they didn't, but I mean, I got to experience it. I wasn't scared or nothing, you know, but it's just not like LA. Like LA, I'm mean, Cali itself has so much more, like so much more than what we know. You know, so many places where we could go and learn and know something different, you know, just to experience. It's just the experience, you guys, you know? And also, um, you guys, uh, what's, what I like about, about your work is that it's really authentic. And people forget that there's like Chicanos, Cholos, Mexican-Americans are a big part of our community. And a lot of the movies come out and they're Cuban and they're Puerto Rican or whatever. And people are really hungry to see themselves on the screen. So like to this day, Jesse Borrego gets swamped when you talk about Blood In, Blood Out and the women from Mi Vida Loca. Everyone loves them because they're all the role models they had. So you guys are kind of role models now too. Yeah, you know, it, we've learned, we've got to meet the cast. And I found out that it took them over 10 years to get that film um, filmed out, like to get the whole stuff out there. You know, 10 years, you guys. And I was like, wow, you know, now we have this, all this new technology where we can like just do it by our phones, you know? and. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's, you know, she brings up a, she brings up a good point, or or you know, um, right now, like right now, like this time, it's like the wild wild west of the internet, like it's the new frontier, and it's it's up for grabs. It's like who, whoever wants to grab it, like it's there for you right now because in one year, two years, even ten years, it's not gonna be it's not gonna be so easy. Right now, it's up like. You could post a video and it could go viral, but I'm pretty sure later in the future it's going to be a little bit harder. But right now it's up for grabs. You got to take advantage. You guys got to you guys got to be the the um the pioneers and 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 take it and 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 build it and and, and make it happen. You guys could right now at, at this time in the future everybody's going to be like, "Damn, I wish I lived back in the day so I could like be, it's, it's more easier like it's not going to be so easy in the future. I could tell the way it's going. Everything's changing. So let me guess, you guys are here to be, to come out in the film industry, right? Or are you guys working on the film industry for whoever, it, like... It's a little of both. The, the classes for people that are 18 to 29, some have experience, some, some don't have experience, but we feel that it's a, 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 what do you call it, a skill people need to have because mm -hmm. everyone's got a story to tell in their community that whether yeah. they work for a nonprofit, whether they see police brutality, having these tools helps them. And we want to have build a network of mentors yeah. and students. So, so the, the students participating are going to use their skills and work with other nonprofits and tell their story and, and, and mentors. 
we don't we don't have experience we never went to school for film or anything like that but it always does help to get that to make a level up mm -hmm. you know um we ended up we're we work on our own we're, we're self um we work within ourselves we don't have like an agent or nothing to kind of push us forward but there is like agencies that online that you can submit to like called one of them is called la casting that's where we work that's where we come from that's where we submit ourselves lacasting.com i think it's a 23 dollars a month unlimited picks that's one of the cheapest things that most people do but we have other ones called um central casting central casting uh, central casting, central is, casting free, is free it's to, to sign the public. up um, you do have to make an appointment before that. Um, it should be like in your nearest city. They take the hair shop for you, like in they'll put you to work right away. So if you guys want to sign up with one, um, it's Central Casting, Central and it does casting, mostly guys. background and and uh, from there, like you'll be on set and then you'll start networking. Like I said, when you go to set, you start networking. Even when I go to set, like oh my god, you guys just don't know. To me, it's like uh, uh, it's like my office. Yeah, you guys like they feed you so good like one of the top chefs they'll feed you for free you get to work you get a lot of downtime and you just come up you know you get to meet the actors the, the celebrities whatever you could just get to be around that whole thing the latinos girl guys and ladies in general we gotta like, come up you guys as latinos the industry is so small we need latinos to come in you guys it's easy and then we you guys get to do what you guys love and get to eat you know and these, let, you guys are well taken care of and, and let me tell you guys something um um uh, you know, I forgot what I was going to say. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. So uh, central casting, it does uh, mostly background, you know, and along the way, people will tell you what to do and what not to do. And let me tell you guys something. Do not listen to anybody but yourself. If someone tells you, ah, don't do it. But if you feel like doing it, do it. Yeah. Because if you're not going to do it, just do it, you know? Oh. Well, I mean, I, well, okay. Yes, hold yes. On, hold on, wait. Well, what I'm trying to get to is that a lot of people told me, well, you already know, you don't have a background, you don't got to do Well, I love to do this. This is how I started, and this is how I want to continue doing it. But what people don't see and they don't get is that me doing background, it still opens up other doors for me. Like, I got to work with Kevin Hart, like and and it's all from doing background and people people don't get it people be like oh well i'm not gonna come out for more than if it's less than 200 or 300 but like uh it's like it's like it's something that you cannot learn honestly you're not gonna learn this in school you're not even gonna learn this in the field you, it's gotta be in your heart if you if it's not in your heart in, in your mind um you, you you're really not gonna get anywhere you cannot let anybody tell you that you can't do it or not to do it and you cannot take any advice from somebody that's not making it. All these people that have been in, in, this, in this industry for 10, 20 years and still haven't got close to where I'm at, they're trying to tell me, Scar, don't do this. Don't do it for this sheep. Don't be on the bus. Don't be on public transportation. I'm going to get to where I'm at doing, what, doing me. I'm going to be me. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it's gotten to me where I'm at right now. But Central also, even though it's background, I don't know if you guys know about the union vouchers. That's where you guys can um, get your union vouchers. It's free. You guys could become someone bigger than what it is. Um, and LA casting, you guys could do um, commercials, um, documentaries, featured films, short films, little small project student films as well. People is open to the public, you guys. Um, It'll give you the hands-on and the skills you guys do need yeah, to central, start off. Central, central casting. casting. It's free. Check it out. Yeah. It's great central advice. Casting. And we have a question from Diane. Um, yeah. So I was wondering, um, so you guys mentioned a lot about staying humble. And I wanted to know, how do you go about not letting your success get to you? Like, get make you feel like you're above everyone else now that you've made it? we're still we're, it's still a process yeah. we're still trying to we, i mean people say we made it but i guess maybe it's the human in us we just want more you know but uh sometimes we don't have a choice you know what i mean like the money isn't always there you know but honestly like uh i'm gonna tell you guys something real okay i might not have all the money or a lot of money 
But when I go out to events or when I go out on the street, people treat me like a million dollars. Like, it's like, I can't even, like, it's so humbling. It's like a humbling experience to, for people to open up doors for you. They give me free stuff, free food. So you see, you don't always got to have the money. Like this exposure has like opened doors that no doors will open for nobody else. Like, and it's so, it's so humbling. Like I've been to concerts where, where I get VIP, VIP, free drinks. Everybody treats me with love and I'll still go hang out with the people instead of being by, uh, in the VIP, mm-hmm. VIP. I'm in the crowd. We're in the crowd. We, like we, we want to see the point of view from our people, you know? like. And, and then people can't believe it. People can't believe that, that. We're there kicking away everybody else. Or even in my, in my, when I'm in the streets, streets of South Central, they're like, what are you doing here? Like, I'm just walking to the store. Like, I'm just, you know, like. They're like, why don't you guys get out of South Central? Like, cause, I mean, it's, South Central is really crazy. You know, like, I don't see any difference. You know, people think that we're rich and famous. But honestly, like, I just stay humble. You yeah. know, like, I still eat my couple noodles. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to go back. I'm still adapted to what I know, you know? Yeah, and we, we might not be rich, but we live a rich life. Yeah, like, like, I still you, go to the clearance sections. You know what I mean? Like, it's, not about, the, it's not about the brand. Well, we, it's about how the look. You know what I mean? Like, how are we going to represent ourselves? How are we going to, like, save money? Shit, like... But you know what? It's still... It's, it's us, yeah, you know? You, you know what? You know, uh, you know uh, actually, uh, like like I, I was saying about it opens up doors. Well, now I work with this brand called FB County. Is this um this clothing brand. And when I was a kid, I would wear nothing but this. And and they stopped making clothes like this, but now they're back. Yeah, they stopped over 10, mm-hmm. 15 years. And, and now they made me... The, the face of the brand. It's like FB like, mascot over like, here. <laughs> like, like, to me, that's the dream come true the that I love to wear and get, like, I got so much clothes for free. Like, I could wear it, like, I got, you guys don't know, and there's all more, colors, and, all there's more and, and there's more clothes coming. So you see, like, oh my God, like, they gave me thousands of clothes, like, thousands of dollars worth of clothes, like, and it's a dream come true because I love this brand and they made me the face of it. Like, and it's because of my work ethic, because I, I took opportunities that nobody else would ever take in their life. So you say we're saving money low key. <laughs> so we might not be rich, but we live a rich life. Like I can't even explain to you how good it feels to just like my face. Like it just opens up doors like, Oh, Scott, come here, go come get a free steak or here, here, where my clothes like people throw their clothes and wear their clothes. I got so much free clothes. Like, like uh, I'm not bragging. I'm just saying. Like, like it's just it's just overwhelming sometimes. Like to get all this love. Like it's something that you cannot buy. Like you can have all. There's a lot of people working in this industry that have a lot of money that don't need the money, but they want it because they want the exposure. So, because they know that the exposure brings, opens up other doors. And honestly, like, I'm just going, I'm just following the flow and it's, it's, it's been good. It's been good. Long story short, no, we are supporting within ourselves. Like, we help them, they help us. Mm-hmm. You know, like, um, we're, we're just, we're just ordinary people, man. Like, we're here to pay our bills, to do what we love, to just pass the word around to to those that don't have a way out you know that or maybe you have that fear of not processing and stuff but we got to knock that fear out because we all have that we we're all going to have the fear whether we're rich famous a celebrity we're always going to want more keep it humble do what you love be patient you know and just just help the community help your people you know it all comes back to you to add to diane's question how do you um not let success go to your head. I think uh, um, another reality is, is how do you not let failure go to your head? And there's a lot of studies right now that say that, that failure is good. And we all know this as a learning tool. Like they say, you know, the people that succeed the most are also the people that fail the most. They just don't stop. They take the most, uh-huh. take the most you know, risk. I guess we have been in the situation where we're like, oh, okay, this is cool, you know, but we got into certain skills that came out wrong and we learned from it. We gotta go. It's not like how he said, have the good without the bad to understand it. You know, like we have to go through that process to, you know, just stay humble, you guys. I don't no, know. Like no. we've been staying humble. What? No, that's fine. Oh. Um, you know, um, how you say about failure? Like, 
um, like, I said, like I said, it's about the resources and who you know. And right now, at this moment, at this second, I can do so much, but I got to wait on people. So you got to be patient. Mm -hmm. You know, like I already, like I already learned, like if I'm not patient, I'm gonna keep failing. I'm gonna keep losing connections and resources. So, right now, all I gotta do is wait. I wish I could be recording something right now. I wish I could do, could do a photo shoot, but I gotta wait on people. Like you guys, maybe you guys have a camera. Maybe we could go do it right now. But you see, it's about who you know, mm -hmm. and and we and and that's why we're kind of at a standstill right now. We just gotta wait on people, like, because you guys got the skills already. Like we we got the equipment, but we're not so good at it. But it's about um. It's about who you know, but you just got to be very patient. I don't ever feel like a failure. I mean, I don't think anybody should feel like one, you know, like, I think that those days will come to you. Maybe it's not your time right now, because we're always going to experience that, you know, the negative sometimes, but we learn from it. Like, I've, I've, trust me, you guys, the first year that I got into this, I was stressed out. I went into depression. From depression, I got sick off of it. I, I let that really get to my head, and I shouldn't have. You know, all that was a learning experience. You know, like, I felt like the world was attacking me, but mm -hmm. I learned from it. You know, I became stronger from it. You know, like, I was numb, you guys. Like, I was like, no, I don't want nothing to do with a camera. Like, I'm, I'm not the type to be, like, recording myself yeah, in the I, street. I, I, don't you know? like, I don't do that either. I don't do that. I just go by the day and just move forward keep moving forward keep pushing yeah, you know, forward you know i love i love the hate i love the hate in the industry it's what because makes there, us anyway. there's so much hate in the industry but to me i use it as gas it's like a fuel mm -hmm. to me and I, I i use it to keep me fo moving forward because if they're not hating on you then you're not doing something right mm -hmm. yeah wow uh, we have a question from angelica oh it's a kitty cat my God, Blanco. <laughs> okay. He loves to hug. <laughs> Hi, yeah. Thank you for sharing your story with us and just being yourself, really, because I think um, I think that's really powerful to show yourself, right? But my question is, um, like, how do you network? Like, what are some tips for networking and building relationships in the industry? So whenever you guys work on a film or someone in the industry of a film, Talk to who you know. Talk to the crew. Talk to whoever like has a bigger hand on of, of that show. And along the way, you guys start meeting and meeting, meeting, keep keep um meeting new people, you know. Um, and then you guys work end up working together along the way. It just starts showing exposure. It takes time. It's, mm -hmm. it's not gonna go from one day to the next. And you, you know? can't. You just can't work with just anybody. Like you really gotta feel them out. <laughs> And check out their work because I found out real quick that you you um deal with people that that say they want it, but then they're gonna end up taking more of yeah. you than, than you put in, and they're gonna want to take whatever you got. Like, yeah, you guys, we lost so a you lot. Gotta, so you, gotta be, yeah. you gotta be you gotta be careful who you work with. You can't just work with anybody. Yeah, like for example, mm -hmm. uh, we've we've filmed a lot of stuff with other camera people and stuff, but at the end, they end up taking, we, we all end up working one day. We have filmed the whole day. And then one day that, that, that fucking video is lost. We never get to see it, so we never get to post it. They end up getting paid and that person just goes MIA. They start fading away. You know, like you gotta, you do gotta know your people and who's, on contact, you know, you guys got to know them really good because but, you guys but you, get to lose a lot. Too, but like. you, you'll get to see who you could work with right away. Like if you see that they have the same interest as you and they want to create a mm -hmm. project that you can all feel that can um, benefit from each other, then, then you proceed, you know, and, and that's just, that's just how it goes. It's, it's all about, it's all one big web. You yeah. Know, you so gotta, you got to be like a spider. Yeah. You got to, uh, you got to commit all your connections. Yeah. So you mentioned kind of like boundaries, right? To not give so much or be careful yeah. about that. Like how, yeah, you, how do you, you know when to like not wait? A oh, sorry. How do I get to what? Oh, sorry. Like in terms of boundaries, like, like when do you know when to stop giving so much or stop like, um, like putting, giving your work, right? Cause you're also giving your ideas and your time. Mm -hmm. You, you stop so, like, when you start feeling like, you're putting way more than what you're when they're what they're putting. Mm -hmm. You always got to put 50 50. Like you put mm -hmm. in and let them put in. You know, yeah. Um, give 50 50. Don't way overdo it because if you're gonna adapt them to you carrying their weight. 
everybody got to carry their own weight, you know, 50, 50, help each other out. Yeah. You know, at this point, I got so many people work, that want to work with me that they'll pay to work with me, but I got to know who I got to say no to and, and who I got to say yes. Yeah. And, and, and most of them, I can't work with them because they kind of, if it like they want to use me, but it's like, it's, I won't benefit from it. Like, yeah. so you gotta, you gotta be careful who you are. Uh, who you work with and why they want to work with you, you know? Yeah, because some will just be like chilling in the sofa and just be like, so what do we do next, car? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, that is their idea, you know, if anything. They mm -hmm. they wanna they want us to do everything, like the video, the plan, mm -hmm. and they just wanna just come out and then take it as their own to be mm -hmm. the host. Like, yeah, no, wanna, man, like what? Yeah, like, I know, I know, like gotta be 50-50. Like, let me tell you guys something, or maybe you guys like if you guys saw, uh, I'm not sure if you guys been following me since day one, but if you look at it. The people that when I first came out up to right now, I, you won't see me with them. You, you're not going to see me hanging around with certain people. And a lot of times you're going to see me alone because along the way you learn who, who to work with and who not to work with. You and know, also, so I think, um, you know, when you're younger in your career, it's important to build relationships and friendships and build a team that you can grow with. But also, it's it's kind of it gets easier to spot the people who, like you said, are good to work with because we found that good people tend to work together, and and people who who, who screw other people, people don't really work with them more than one production. So if they're like, oh, this guy's worked with me for ten years, that's a good sign. But if you work with somebody and everyone's new, and they're like fifty, you know, you're like, well, wait a minute, there's something wrong here. You know, it just doesn't feel right. But ultimately, also. Back to your, your, your question, Angelica, is that it is a two-way street. You're getting something in return from experience or whatever. But if you feel uncomfortable that it's, it's totally one-sided, you know, you can start making, um, I don't want to say demands, but letting, you know, voicing your opinion. And you quickly find out people that will listen to you and, and care about you and people that, that, like you guys were saying, don't. They just care about their project or, or their ego. But uh, if you start feeling that it's going one way, the best thing to do is just let people know. It doesn't have to be like in a, a forceful way, but you can spot pretty easily how somebody reacts. Hey, you know what, um, let me tell you guys something, because I think um, we're kind of dwelling into a lot of negativity because honestly, it is a lot, a lot of negativity, but that's when you become, you got to like create a bigger shell. Like, so they can't panic. They can't let him. You cannot let these people get to you, you know? So like, there's a lot of negative, negative, but there's more love than negative because I got a, a lot of people that, that love me. And I mean, if you see my followers, like I can't even believe I got that many followers and it's all because people love me and, you know, and a lot of them maybe are haters to see what I'm doing, but for the most part, it's all love, you know? And that's a good point because you can run into people who, have worked their whole career and they have all these great stories and they love what they do. And like you said, no matter what challenges they've had, they've overcome them. They've made a lot of friends. And then you talk to people who, who like their whole career is just one disappointment after another one bad choice, just all these stories of how, um, like all the bad people they've worked with. Don't be that person. You know, if you sense that something's not going right, you can move somewhere else. You can do mm -hmm. something else with other people. But if you're there 10 years later and you don't feel good about it, you got to change your approach. Look, let me tell you guys something, okay? So I work with a few people already. And as soon as we work with them, they tell me, damn, I posted this video and now all these people disappear. And this, and I laugh each and every single time because honestly, like, you're going to realize right away people do not want to see you come up. And that's when you know that you're doing something right. You're going to lose. In order to make it in this industry, you're going to lose a lot of people. Like, I, I, I hate to be negative, but that's the, just the reality. Like, it's so funny. Like, when people come out, like, in videos, they tell me how their family members or, or their friends, like, stop talking to them because they see them doing something different. And that's just what's going to happen. Like, people are going to start hating on you. But then you start weeding out all the bad weeds and all the good the good seeds come in. And you gain people, too. Mm -hmm. We have a question from Saeed. Yeah, so... um. I, re I remember you talking about the first video that you made with the lollipops, the roses, um, and well, they were Jolly Ranchers, but with the roses, and I thought that was 
you know, I, it was interesting hearing the backstory, but you also have another one where you did a Christmas edition and that one's way different. Like in the first one, you use like a bowl of hot water. And in the second one, you have like that electronic, like you, you know, it's totally different. So there's an obvious level up between the first video that you did and this Christmas edition. You even had these like dollar store, like, I don't know, decorations for the roses. Um, so I was wondering like, what what was behind that like shift you know like what what happened what changed well you know what you gotta see it like as 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 it it, it evolved right you know um in, in jail we all just have a microwave and uh when i got out i was still doing them in the microwave and then i realized oh well i could do it with an electric stove keep the heat warm and make them faster and uh you see it's all about evolving and I kind I kind of actually knew that already. I just didn't want to show it in the video, in the first video. I, I I didn't even want. Look, let me tell you guys something. I didn't even want to show people how I made these candy rolls. It's, it, it, it's just a lot of industry BS that that I could go into. I mean, maybe we could sit down one day and I'll tell you guys what I've been through. I don't know. You guys will start crying because this is like, it makes no sense sometimes, you know. But the way, I'll just keep it short. Okay, I'll just keep it short. But I'll tell you guys about about this some other day. But, um. I just made some candy roses uh, for Valentine's a couple of weeks ago, and I found a faster way to make them. So you see, it's always, you always gotta evolve. You always gotta evolve. And, and right now I'm surprised I can't wait to make more candy roses because it does get messy. But so he has a new a new way. Um, a new he's, technique. We, he's trying to find a, a newer te technique of what you guys know from the first and second yeah. to make a machine to kind of like just like let the yeah, so you see, so like, so you see, I have. Uh, new devices. I, I'm still, I'm still evolving my way of making them. Mm. Practice makes perfect, you guys. Mm. You know, like I said. Right. Even just, from the production, though, like even from like the the way, like your confidence behind the camera, like the setting, and just it just all was so different from the first video that I was like, I have to know more about what was this change, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it's really hard to stay confident. It's like, you know, um, I heard a long time ago that acting is one of the hardest jobs. And you think, oh well, it's just acting. No, but it's like you become a whole other person, and like you gotta hold that weight. Like you gotta hold that 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 confidence, like you say. But oh my God, it's like after, like after you do a shoot you're so exhausted like i'm so exhausted like you're like okay well, well he didn't do nothing like but but I, I believe that like doing acting it is one of the most um exhausting work because at the end of the day you're gonna feel like so like so like uh drained you know yeah i think we have different different um that i i think is one of the easiest things mm -hmm. i have ever done it's just hard when you keep doing the same thing over and over and it's and it is exhausting because you got to do the same thing over and over because me i've worked in welding i worked in um painting cars i've been in landscaping i work with my dad like i like a challenge you know i like men jobs but as a woman like they it was really hard to get into that industry you know but this is one of the easiest things that i have ever done that i got to feel like is myself mm. you know um, before when the, when I started tatting, because my whole body's tattooed, um, they would look at me kind of different, like, oh, like, oh my gosh, she has all tattoos, so it was hard for me to even get a job. Like I said, like, just being Latina is hard. Um, being a female is even harder, and having tattoos is even harder, you know? So, to me, this, I, I like it. It, it, it gets to, it gives me, like, a new experience, and, like, because I started with the whole reality show, and now I gotta be someone different. So I'm like, here, let me play this role. You know, like see how I see how it feels. You see how what it makes me be. You know, and I don't know. It's just different. Like to me, I love it. You know, and I feel like everybody should have like a little taste or some skill into this industry. Like you guys, I'm telling you, we need these Latinos to come out here. Like I want, I want you guys to experience that. You yeah. know. You know, have a break in life. You know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna give you guys a reality that a lot of people like aren't, aren't um, aren't like aware of, even though like it's so clear. Like there's either Spanish or English, and every time there's Spanglish, like it just goes away each time. Like there's nothing that for us really like. So we gotta be the ones to make it. Like a lot of people are so worried 
to get the biggest role like oh i want to do this i want to i want to get this role i want to be in a movie i want to be in in this in this series like to me it's about becoming your own person creating your own path creating your own character creating your own content that's what you got to do stop following what everybody's doing like you don't got to be the best actor you don't you just be yourself just be yourself follow your heart and you'll make it because that's what i'm doing Everybody tells me, you know, you know, when I go to set, I could feel the hate, you know, because people ask me, are you still doing the videos? Are you still doing this? Like, like, don't congratulate me. Don't ask me what I'm doing. Like, my work is out there. I, I have not stopped making videos since I started. But people, people, what people really want to know is, 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 if, is if I stopped already. And I'm not going to stop anytime soon or anytime. I'm trying to create my own lane, my own freeway. And, um, and if anybody wants to join me, they, they can. You know, but a lot of people don't think like that. They wanna, they wanna just follow the the same path that a lot of people ha have been following. But to me, in this day and age, like the way everything is going, you gotta create your own path, be your own person, and don't don't listen to nobody but yourself. Like unless unless it's me or take advice from people that are. Don't um, get brainwashed. That's what he's saying. Don't yeah, get brainwashed don't. by the media, by what people are doing all constantly. You know, just do you, you guys. You know, like, it, you guys will always go forward if you guys just be yourself. Yeah. Let me tell you guys you know? something. Like, I'll tell you, I want to keep it real with you guys, but I don't know how real I could keep it. Real, real. <laughs> but like, Too but like, real. There's a lot of people that you guys follow that don't like us. Like, that big people. And, and these are, I, I could say so many names. But they don't like us because of the love we hit, of the love that we get, and they don't get that love, you know. So it's just sad, but that's the reality. But you can't let that get to you. You just gotta keep moving forward. I used to cry, you guys, because there was people that I, I used to look up to when I was like 13, 14 years old, and I got to meet them in person. Now I'm 35, you know. Like now, now that I'm 35, like I get to meet them, I get to chill with them, and there's certain people that would actually tell you, hey, take a picture, and then they'll post it and talk shit. Like, what the hell was that about? And that hurt me because I used to look up to these celebrities, you know, and for them to hate me just because, because I'm here just being myself. Like, why are they so focused mm -hmm. on what I do? You know, but because they're hating, because they're not where they want to be, mm -hmm. you know? So just keep moving forward, you guys. Don't be like me that fell into some stress, depression, then got sick off sciatica. I got sick off sciatica, you guys. Like, I couldn't get up for two months. It was crazy. But just be positive. Move forward. Do what you love. Be yourself. Don't get brainwashed to what people are telling you because that's just feeding just negativity. Just You know, you know when I was a kid, um, I used to look up to a lot of people, you know? But, like, now that I'm in this industry... The only person I look up to is myself because, and you know, that might sound kind of like, I don't know how that sounds, but I do. Like, I don't see nobody else doing what I'm doing. Like, it should be like that. You are your own challenge. That's so, the way I see so it. So you guys should look up to yourselves. It doesn't matter how old you are. Look up to yourself first before you look up, before you follow or look up at anybody else. That, that's all I got to tell you. About you're here that. to beat yourself and that's yeah, it be here, yeah exactly you're here to challenge yourself exactly only. exactly nobody don't, else don't try to be like nobody else don't try to be like me because i noticed like like a lot of people think like oh i'm gonna get face tattoos like scar because he's making no like having tattoos on my face is it, it, it's actually making it harder you know but I, i'm able to get to where i'm at because i'm building myself up i'm built i want to become that household face that oh look that's scar like he's a nice guy you know like, I don't want to be known as, as the negative because I could be negative, but I try to keep it positive as much as I can. And also, you bring up an important point. In, in this industry, whether it's being a writer or a performer or behind the camera, people, like, no matter how talented you are, if people like to work with you, they'll work with you. If, if you're a jerk, they won't work with you. Like, you could be the most talented guy, but if you treat everybody badly, nobody wants to work with you. So having that attitude you know, really opens a lot of doors, you know, um, and everyone has different work styles. So being able to adapt and listen, and like you said, be humble, but also be professional and know what you want to put into it, what you bring to the table is important. But, uh, but no, the attitude is everything. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what? Um, I do a lot of um, little projects too, like a lot of my projects that I'm working on. And a lot of people like, um, like to, 
work with other people but not pay them like me i'll try to pay everybody who works with me like i won't have anybody do anything for free so sometimes the money does come to effect like even a little bit of money goes a long way so when like like if you guys go to these agents agencies they'll they won't pay you they'll be like okay do this job but we won't pay you but it's for the maybe um uh, for the experience or for something. the better cause sometimes you know mm, like we we'll, like we we'll go to um like we, we juveniles won't. we go to high schools junior highs and go we'll talk about how we went through it um or how they're feeling that they, maybe they can um feel some kind of um same they, they're going they might be going through the same situation we just talk you know we we don't we don't charge for all that like we just go in for, it's just for a better cause you know like we do it ourselves yeah, it's a we learning, go to the it's, streets it's a learning experience once you're on the field you learn real right away like how it, it's not like it's not it's not all glamorous and 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 um how it is in the movies but when you work the way i've been working like to get to where i'm at like it, it does pay off don't think that oh it is a struggle and it still is but at the end it, it it's paying off it's, it's definitely paying off like like you guys don't know how i feel like when i go to these places and it, it, like me being who i am and where i come from to get treated like like royalty like we get treated like royalty a lot of times where when we go out to places and it's just so humbling like you guys have no idea how it feels like for people to open up doors for you and offer you all kind of stuff and it's all because i i was able, i i i believe in people even though people have let me down so much that has not stopped me from trying to work with other people you know it's just about moving forward and also there's that term you know paying your dues there's no real easy way you everyone has to do the job pay their dues but you get better along the way you get stronger and if you do it right you love the process it makes you better and you get excited about it um okay so we have a question from Elizabeth again yes Elizabeth you're on the mic yes hi um yeah so my question was um i guess how do you build that inner strength and stay confident during those tough times where like you start feeling down um or i know like something that i've experienced is like that imposter syndrome was like oh should i be here is this like right for me like how, what do you guys do to kind of build up your own confidence and be like no this is okay for me to be here and to still try and go forward well you know that's when you come to effect it's like that's when you realize oh is this for me or not a lot of people get like oh i don't want this like but it's on you it's on you like not to let these people get to you like you're going to see it like what well, what is this i never had this before but that's when you evolve to not let it get to you it's kind of, it's a learning experience like you're going to deal with it and you're going to feel it cuz a lot of people that i work with they tell me right away oh like i never felt this before like what is this to me it's 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 become to the point where i just laugh like it's so hilarious because I remember when I first felt the hate like like people like all the negativity I was like what what is this like like to me it's different because I am a former gang member and to me it's like 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 what do they think like they're not going to then I'm not going to see them in person I love showing my face I love seeing everybody because I know they don't like me but that don't stop me though but that that's when you you yourself have to build up that that confidence you you got to like like this is you got to tell yourself this is what I want to do I'm not going to let anybody interfere with me you know and if you guys uh if anybody messes with you guys you can call on us and we'll have your back you know what you guys you just got to accept the worst you know like as long as you guys accept the worst and you get there's always going to be that one person too many not maybe too many that does the fair dozen that's always going to have something to say and that not agree with you you know you just got to accept it and be like you know what it's fine you know as long as you're doing you just keep moving forward you know okay. like don't let nobody get to you and also i mean with the work that you do sure you might run into that person that might have something negative to say but then you look at your numbers and there's 12 million people that like what you do and they're all looking at you as role models and you know love what you're doing and sharing it and it makes them laugh and it makes them feel good about themselves you know it's having that perspective you know makes it easier to like put the other negativity in its place yeah mm -hmm. all right uh, sara he has a question um, oh yeah so y'all talked a lot about your career like coming up in your career and how you haven't stopped yet you also talked a lot about your community impact so 
So I was just curious, like, what is your vision for the future? Like, given those those two main themes, your career, you still want to go up more, and you're still doing your community impact. Like, what's your vision for the future for those themes? Wanna go first, or should I go first? Well, me, I'm gonna be honest with you. I I like going to the elementary because, like, I you know the kids are. I feel like just teach them how to like and be because I think this generation has lost their morals or respect with mm-hmm. when it comes down to um kids you know I'm a mother I volunteer at the elementaries I, I feel like these kids have no respect nowadays you know and if we teach them how to live and be then maybe our generation to come their kids kids can come out to be better within themselves you know like way back like before we used to have respect we used to have morals like there's not nothing like that no more I don't know if it's um the technology but we got to use the negative into positive. It's because you, know? you can't hit your and kids no more. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> chunk class. From a distance, we just got to be positive. You know, um, things have changed. And I'm, I'm hitting the targets towards our kids, you know, and, and for the future, I know it might take a long time. It might take a while to change it. But as long as one of these kids grow up to having to speak up on what I wanted to do now, then it can keep going forward and forward to change the next generation to come i feel like that's that's my goal and i want to help the people in the street like the elderly you know to i don't know I just yeah. want, we just she wanted, wants to use her platform i want to use my platform to be better within the streets and our kids and for the generation to come and maybe not right now but you know, you know i'm taking it step by step day by day yeah. You know, um, it's it's funny because it's not funny, but it's interesting that you asked that because uh, me and Irene were just talking about that last night. Like she asked me, "What's my what 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 do I want to get out out of all this?" And I told her, like it might sound like far fetched, but I do want to change the world. Like, and that's what we're all here for. Like any little impact that you guys do, like positive or negative, has a, a everlasting effect. Like that's gonna last forever. And what what I feel like what I'm doing is setting a good example that the gang members we don't all have to be bad we can all be good and to change our community i know? have you know what i have a lot of gang members come up to me all the time like almost crying and they tell me that they love what i do and i know because they it's like they they see themselves in me and and i love to portray myself because i see myself as me and i'm like wow like nobody Everybody wants to be the tough guy. Everybody wants to be doing damage to your neighborhoods and and, and think that's cool. But I, f- I feel that I'm reaching neighborhoods in Africa, uh, Asia. I'm reaching all these neighborhoods and I'm teaching people, look, you could be good too. Uh, you could be a tough guy, but you could be good too. And I feel like I already changed the world in, in a sense, but I want to keep doing that. I want to keep showing them, like, look, this is how to be. You don't have to be... Um, negative to your neighborhood, you can build your neighborhood. And, and I think I did that with hermanos. Hermanos, mm-hmm. it shows so much reality that, like, you know, a lot of kids resonated with this movie and it's already taught them a lesson. Like, there is no winning in being in gangs and there is no winning being involved in gangs. But I'm not saying, uh, well, I don't know what I'm saying. I'm just babbling. But I do want to change the world. And, and that's what I'm trying to do. Like, you know? and, and we think, the way we were adapted, you know? And we think that, that, you know, using video and technology is a way to get your message out at a bigger level, but at a, at a way that's, like you said earlier, it's, it's never been more accessible. You know, you're not um, limited by not having a $80,000 budget. If you have your, your cell phone, you can put it on the net. You know, you can reach it the whole world. But do you want to show, tell us a little bit more about Urbano so we can show it. Uh, you mentioned it was a 17-year-old kid that, that came to you guys. Uh, so tell us what we're about to see, and we can watch it. All right, well, um, this 17-year-old kid from Los Feliz, it was a white boy that reached out to me and wanted to do this film. But you know what he told me after I agreed to make the movie? And he went up to so many people to do this film, and everybody said no to him. Everybody, He told me that everybody, everybody thought that they, that he was trying to scam them because who would in their right mind do a film, take their time off their day and not get paid? 
not only that he he this is this this um this white kid was like from the stubborns he didn't know nothing about hood or latinos at all like he had to interview us to kind of get a like a little inside out his parents thought he was crazy when they reached out to to scar because he's all tatted they were like oh yeah yeah okay go do your film he went out on his own took the bus and got to meet us and one thing led to another scar said okay we ended up getting our family members and friends we made it happen. We we did it. At, we improvised along the way, you know. And one thing led to another, and now look at it, you know. Like now it's and over twelve million views and growing. That like it, it's just so crazy because it's like it was meant to be. Like that video, Hermanos, was never supposed to be on YouTube. But I don't know what came to my mind. I told them more. Hey, put the, put it on YouTube. Like. Where's that at? Who got the cops? <laughs> um, yeah, so this video was never supposed to be on YouTube. I told the director, hey, put this on YouTube so more people can see it. And he said, at first he said no, because you're not supposed to put short films on YouTube that are going in festivals. Like, they could get in trouble. So I told him, like, okay, just put it. And if something happens, we'll take it down. But we put it on YouTube, and it just blew up. Like, it just... It just went viral, and up to this point, up to right now, it's still hitting like a hundred thousand views a day. Like the numbers have not stopped. Like that's how no, like we made a huge impact on it. They're they're ma they're planning on showing it to juvenile halls now and high schools. They're showing it. Well, I've heard that they're showing actually showing it now. But mm -hmm. I guess you know it's 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 growing. Mm -hmm. It's growing to show a positive movement that not to criticize and judge. Mm -hmm. you know, now. And it looks great. It looks really great. Imagine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he was gonna give up. He was never gonna make this film because, like, honestly, I don't think anybody would ever take this, take on this project, you know, and not get paid for it, you know. But I did, and honestly, it paid off. It paid off so much. Like we made a this this one is a classic, like all on its own. Like and 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 now I, I want to make part two of it. You know, it, it's become so big that we, I feel like a a responsibility to give it to people because they're, they're always asking me when they're going to make part two or is part two coming and should we watch it we're going to make it happen and you guys are free. yeah you guys are, yeah. you guys can join us okay so let's watch yeah, it, let's what watch I do? it. This is the first time we've we've done this with um with the uh, zoom but i'm going to share my screen and then the uh show the video on youtube um there might be an ad in it but i didn't see an ad when i watched it earlier today so hopefully not it's 25 minutes so settle in and then we'll come back uh, with with uh, Mario and Irene afterwards for more questions and uh, this is Hermanos. Enjoy. Mm -hmm. Maybe because you see, I know it's because of you. <laughs> okay, hold on, I'm still. Maybe they could ask us questions while we're watching it. Do you want to? I mean, they can, you know. Like maybe the cast was like, how did that happen here? How did that happen there? Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna do full screen, and then uh, if if we don't hear the audio, I'm gonna have to restart it. But I think it's set for audio. Hold on. Well, let them enjoy it. <laughs> what if you watch it on their own time? You guys, you guys gotta watch it too, so we can get more views. Okay. <laughs>
shit, bro. Yeah, so we filmed that in Cypress Park. Right behind me, yeah, dude. Not English class. It's like 
Um, always asking me for a pencil. Mm -hmm. I always see her like with three pencils. She's just finding a, a reason to talk to you, though. What? Is she, is she sure? What? She likes you. Like, I'm not sure because what if she really needs a pencil? So she's sitting here with three pencils. I know, bro, what should I do? Just be like, what's up? My name's Mateo. What's your name? That's true. Bro, she had that confidence. Just the smallest thing, just to bring up a conversation. I don't know, or like, they brought a pen. Yeah, because you need a pencil, right? Yeah, pen and pen. Yeah, you know. Hey, so, um, what's up, bro? I heard your brother just got out. Oh, yeah, he just did. That's cool. That's just not cool, dude. He's crazy. All right, well, I'll see you on the field tomorrow. Always, man, I'm on All right, man. All right. Don't flake on me, bro. Hey, nah, you better come. I said, why everybody wants to pass me? I don't know about you. Who's, who's going to score if you're not there? Who's going to score? Just a quick question for everybody. Is the video playing okay on your screens? It's a little slow, yes. but... Okay, so let me do this. Let me jump forward a bit. And then you guys can watch it on your own. But I want to show a little bit with Scar in there. Hold on. Yeah, right there. That's a good part. Right there. Jimmy Snooker and I don't know. Jimmy Snooker, what the fuck? Yeah. Yeah. You know, next thing you know, this Fatu gets mad, picks up his pork chop, and slaps that dude in the face <laughs> with it, man. <laughs> Yo, that shit was hilarious. They start rumbling. I get into it with a celly. By the time I look up, Alejandro's got him on the ground, stuffing a banana in his mouth and pork and beans and everybody's All in problem. The guards run in, snatch this bottle up, right? And the whole time they're dragging him out, he's yelling, how did my banana taste good? How did my banana taste good? It was hilarious, man. It was funny, man, I'm telling you. Meet you, Alejandro, man. Glad you're back, homie. That's right. Vato's always been crazy, man. For real. always been crazy. But now that you're back, it's time to take the audio back. You know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. He's on the hoop. Mm -hmm. I never know. He tried grabbing on the hoop. He just mm -hmm. wouldn't let it go. A little basketball thing. <laughs> hey, Mateo. 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 Hey, get over here. Over here, come say hi to your big brother. What's up, bro? What is wrong with you? Nothing. Get in there, man. Yeah. Don't respect. Look at me. I'm fine, bro. I'm fine. Fine. I said, fucking look at me. Oh. <laughs> they got my good side. Man, who the fuck did this to you? Bro, you know me. I fell playing soccer. Fuck. <laughs> that little clumsy motherfucker, huh? <laughs> Hey, Gabby, come here. Man, somebody better tell me what the fuck is going on right here. What that motherfucker is not good. Fuck that. Let's 
Go. Go. All right, so we'll we'll stop it there. <laughs> to give you guys, uh, what do you call it? The uh, the, uh, the suspense. Mm. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, it was. It was. I mean, it's something that you actually do get to experience daily when you actually live out here in South Central yeah. or any yeah. type for that mm -hmm. matter. But, but one thing that's cool about it is that, um, I mean, it looks really good. And I think it was, was it choppy on you guys' video screens? Yeah, it was yeah, a little yeah, bit. At some point, it was like moving right forward. <laughs> a little oh, okay. too good, yeah, that's why I wanted to stop it so you guys can, I, I do recommend you go watch it on YouTube and, um, you know, see it in, in full quality, at full speed. It looks really great. But one thing that I really like, and we're talking about like stereotypes and talking about, um, you know, authenticity is that in a, in a Hollywood movie, those cholos would be hard all the time, right? And they'd be stoned and they'd be, uh, there'd be like a hundred guns already in the, in the movie. But here they're having a barbecue, people are playing soccer, you know, stuff that you see in the, in the, in the community all the time. And when they get, um, when they have to protect each other, they kick into gear, but it shows the human side of them. And I think that, um, you know, I don't doubt that those guys are real, uh, real cholos, um, but you see the humanity that you don't see in other, in other, like this was, uh, um, I don't know, like Fast and the Furious or something. It'd be a crew of really hard people and they'd be selling cocaine and they'd be, you know, like from the get go that they'd be one dimensional. But, um, you know, you just, your character just got out of, out of prison. He's there with his family. His mom's making tacos. You know, that's something that, that it's part of our experience. I mean, even when the guy like taps the, um, the, you know, the spatula on the side of the, of the grill, you know, that's, that's, that's real. Um, so, um, real, real burnt. was it? It's real burnt meat too. Yeah, exactly. It looks we, good. Yeah, that uh, was actually, you know, we were, he was actually cooking while we eat. Like we were really eating that food. Like oh, so the, 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 the meal that you're eating in the scene is your lunch. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and that, you know what, um, um, if you look at it closely, like the mom is her aunt mm. and, um, her mom is actually there too. And all those people there are all my, my colleagues uh, and, and some of them are friends. And I brought all those people there. Like, yeah, well, they've all, never been on film, yeah. never, never understood. It's all people we know. It was pretty funny because my, my tia, she doesn't know anything. She just watches Laura or, or Rojo Vivo, the news, you know, like she didn't know anything about filming. So... They, she didn't understand that the camera was right in front of her, and they told her here to take a bite off of the taco. Oh, it was so funny. You know, just kind of like, um, just act like it. So she was just like, <laughs> she wasn't really yeah. eating or nothing, but it came out so funny because we were like, man, just be yourself. So she's like, oh, okay. So, mm -hmm. you know, it was, it was just the first time for everybody. You know, yeah. it was. Just Well, you've cut out for a second. That it doesn't matter what race you are, but he didn't really know about the culture. Huh? He said, "Hold on." Um, oh, uh, yeah, you cut out for a second. Would I you, would you, would you say? Oh, I was saying um, that film, and mostly most of the film is all improv. Like we had the the scene set, but he'll be he'll tell us, "Well, what would you say? What would you do?" And a lot of stuff we just made it up at the moment. Like everything that I'm saying. It's all made up at the moment. He's like, well, what would you tell your brother when he's coming in? Like, well, I tell him to get over here. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, and you say, okay, we'll say that. And then he's like, well, what, what would you do next? Well, I'll tell everybody, well, let's go. Let's go handle this right now. So, like, we actually filmed it as we're going along with it. Like, it, it just happens so quick. Like, and, and, and sometimes reality is, is better than, than, um, than acting. That's important to know because, like I said, there's a lot of authenticity, but that's because that's what you guys brought to the table. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, what was his experience? Yeah. I wish I could sit down with you guys and tell you, like, like we go play by play, and, and you'll be surprised how, like, the whole thing we just improv did, like, the whole way, like, the whole way. And, and it became so viral. Like, I mean, it just, man, it, it's, just, it's just crazy. It's like magic. That's, that's, that's what you call movie magic. 
we did it naturally and one thing led to another the day at the premiere we ended up that um los angeles times was in the building they were being a photographer just taking pictures and stuff we were like what like it's pretty cool but the whole time that we filmed those days we were actually shocked that the edit went down to just 25 minutes of film and we actually made people cry in the theater it was pretty awesome so we, we felt some type of way and one thing led to another and each premiere that we kept doing was making people cry. So we're like, why don't we just keep moving forward and make another one? Not telling people what we were gonna do, just kind of throw them in there like we did the first one and just see what happens. Yeah, you know? and you guys are more than welcome to yeah, be in part two. Come. Like any, any anything you guys can bring to the table or just showing up. Or wanna be part of it, like come or just in. Just be there and check know? it out. Like uh, it's gonna be amazing, you know. Well, let us know when you when you start uh, ramping that up to, to film so we'll spread the word. Everything, I already got all the actors and I already got like all the stuff that we need. We just need locations and start setting it up. But you know what's so cool about this is that when I tell people that I'm going to make part two, they're so excited. Like they want to be in this movie. They want to be a part of this because they've seen the impact that part one has done. Like they tell me, yeah, get me in there. Y'all look like people reach out to me. They'll, they'll, even, they'll even pay me to be in this film, but I'm not going to go that route. But anybody that wants to help, they're more than welcome. But I just love it that everybody oh, wants cute. to be a part of this project, you know? Look at Bocha. Congratulations. No, I really, you know, you guys watch it on YouTube. It's really great. It's, it's got a, a, you know, a really strong ending. But the, the shots are beautiful. The editing is beautiful. The cars are beautiful. Um, so we have another question from Lisbeth. Yes. <clears throat> Um, hi. So, like, I know it's only 25 minutes, but I was wondering, like, how long production took from, like, start to finish? Because I know you keep talking about, like, the improvisation and trying to get everyone together. So how long did you work on this project? Seven days. Yeah, seven days, like, but uh, sporadic dates because we, we had to work with everybody's schedule. Yeah. Like, it was uh, at one point, um, I was coming from Florida. We had, we had swim, we had uh, filmed in the swamps of Georgia. and uh, I came from the LAX dressed up and ready to film. Like I'll leave, uh, So we see, we, had, we, just, we were just trying to make it work and we were just trying to like finish it and get it out the way. Like, yeah. you know, um, Not everybody's days was off. So as a matter of fact, for the last day that they actually filmed was on Father's Day. Because yeah, so, we knew that everybody was going to be available. So we only took them for like three hours and that's the day they finished. And then some people couldn't be available. So it kind of changed the whole thing. But I mean, it worked out at the end. You know, it's just about like Improving. working with what you got. Improv. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, work with what you have. You know? All right. Do we have any questions from anybody who hasn't asked a question? Salvador, um, Alejandra, Madeline. I think Salvador has a question. All right, do, can you unmute yourself? We know sign language, so. Yeah. Oh, you're <laughs> unmuted now. Go ahead and, and, and talk. Salvador? Maybe I could re read his lips. Oh. We, uh, we can't hear him. He's we saying. can't hear you. Do you want to type out your question? Yeah. We I can't hear you. He's saying, um, can I? You're not uh, muted. No, you can't. Okay. Like, how long did production take? Oh, I think we already yeah, that, got that. Yeah. yeah. So, can you type in a question, uh, Salvador? Or, or, or you just muted yourself? Maybe your volume is down? Yeah, it says that he's. Okay, wait, it, it went away. Yeah. There should be a little chat window near the bottom, a little chat bubble. Yeah. No, no. Uh, or maybe we could go to, we'll come back to him. Okay. Or if you want to text me your question, my, my number, and then like, I'll read it. Um, well, while we're waiting to, to get your, your question, my question is, um, you know, in terms of production, everyone always asks, how much did it cost? What did you film with? I know that in this film there's drones, but also in terms of the, the Cholo's Try videos, um, you know, what's the setup for that? Is it one camera and then the lights, or is it like two cameras, three cameras? All right, well, as far as um, the movie Hermanos, mm -hmm. it wasn't, no, um, it wasn't no, no equipment. It was just all shot um, 
with a camera. It wasn't nothing big. It didn't have it. At the end, it did have one big rig. But throughout the movie, it's all camera. It's, it's, um, we didn't use any drones for that one. Uh, but yeah, it was all natural light from the sun. So we had to work with the sunlight, like, you know, and um, a good, um, we call it uh, color effect, the, the color corrections. So that has a lot to do with it. And it's, you don't always have to use the best camera. You know, we used a very simple camera to film and it's about how you edit and, and the color correctness and it can make, it could look like better than any movie. So you don't always gotta have the best equipment, you know, but you do gotta have a good sound. You. Yeah, you do gotta have a good sound and, um, and that's how we did it. But um, as far as the Me Too videos, um, we do use good lighting, a good background, uh, maybe one or two cameras, but nothing, we don't gotta use some expensive ass cameras. You know, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt. But, um, yeah, there, we, there was a drone shot um, at the ending of the video, but oh, I think yeah, um, oh, yeah, they, no, they, okay, they rented no. it out. Mm -hmm. And um, But this is one of the cameras that they use. It's, it's a Sony um, A7 uh, III, but this is a newer model from the one that they actually use. This mm -hmm. is a newer one, but this, is, this was it. This is what they use. So you see, just with that, it's very simple. with that you could do so much. Yeah, and also, um, but I've also seen students use their own phone to create a movie. Mm -hmm. You know, I, oh, and you know what? If you guys don't know about Amaletto, Amaletto is a really good site from YouTube that you guys can watch all these short films <laughs> from all across the country. Mm -hmm. um, they became very viral and they're very good um, videos. Some were actually shot from iPhones. Mm -hmm. So you see, it's not Free. about, it's not everybody always always tells me when are you going to be in a, in a movie or in another thing. And like, I'm happy doing these YouTube videos. I'm happy where I'm at. I don't got to follow um what everybody else is doing or try to follow because a lot of times um you're not gonna reach that point it's very limited you know and i'm not trying to if i do end up um being there it's just it's just because i end up i'm not really i'm a very lazy person you know i'm not i i, I uh, i'm not like kobe or tupac that you know how they talk about how they're so busy working like i am busy sometimes but the, busy. yeah but for the most part i like to be lazy so I'm working really hard to be so, lazy. To be lazy, so I can just be chilling and have the money come in, you know. Like so, that's what I'm working hard like, for. Who doesn't like to sleep, right? Yeah, I like to relax. <laughs> I like to take it easy. I still do. I could be doing way more than I than I than I I can. But right now, I'm just I'm just taking my time. Like I said, like it, I just fell into this. I'm 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 growing with it, and I I, I I'm a, we're gonna get to where we need to get to. But we're taking our time. We're not rushing into yeah. anything. You know, we're just going with the flow. Yeah, like, we're not going to stress ourselves out to going to go where everybody needs to go. You know, like, we want to be where it's less crowded, where not everybody's going, you know what I mean? Creating your own lane and just do something different. Just keep it real because a lot of people don't like facts, honestly. But I like to keep it real. I like to, I, I got to tell people what they need to hear instead of what they don't want to hear. You know what I mean? Because... If those people are telling you what you want to hear, is it because they don't really care? I'm telling you what you need to hear to kind of like just cut through it because cause I care for my people. You know, whatever, whenever you guys are going through a certain situation, I feel it. I'm that person. I get emotional, you know, and I want to see my people be great, you know, into what they are doing. We are our own heroes and just look up to yourselves, you know, challenge yourself to learning something different every single day to get that skill you know i like i like what you said like about being our own heroes because at the same time we could be our own villain you know yeah. so it's just about how you um it's all it's all in your mind so it's, it's how you treat yourself or is you gotta not only be healthy but be mentally healthy and yeah. and, and just be prepared for whatever Process. comes it's just life you know but i'm um, answering your question about the budget it was a very low budget film but when you're working with good people and good networks and good resources, that's when you create something like this. Like it's the quality that I think the quality made the film what it is because sometimes when you're watching a film and it has bad noise or, or the set looks too fake where it's just staged, like it's kind of like to the eyes off putting. So you kind of don't want to watch it or you're like forcing yourself to watch it. Like I've seen a lot of like, feature films on YouTube or short films that the quality and the sound is just awful. And sometimes they got big stars in it. 
So you could just imagine like, just because you're a big name in the industry, it doesn't always mean that you're going to get the best quality. And, and sometimes it's like, whoa, like you would think with all the money that they have. Or like, even the money, you guys, like these directors, just because they feel like they have the money, they feel like they're going to get the authenticity of a, of a film. Like I like to keep it authentic of what made it to get to where they're at. You know, sometimes they have the money. They just want to throw it out there because they're like, oh, we have the money. Like, let's just put in all this money and then make the film not authentic. You know, like, I don't know if you guys ever seen La Llorona. Um, the way they speak of the Llorona, like, to me, I grew up with La Llorona. La Llorona. You know, it's like she was this woman that threw her kids to the lake. You know, they kept screaming, like, oh, my, she kept screaming, mis hijos. The movie is nothing like it. Like, they call her La Llorona. Like, and I felt like, what the hell was this about? You know, like, all that money that they put in, like, it messed up my authenticity of, of the authentic of the film of who she's supposed to be, you know? Um, I don't care about the money, man. Just make the film be right, you know, like make it be right. And, and what it made me feel is growing up as a little kid, you know, hearing of her, you know, I was afraid of her. Like, I wasn't scared of this movie at all. <laughs> it's just like, what is this going to be? And that's also why it's important that, you know, what we keep getting back to, to tell your own stories. Because I remember when that came out, all the Latino writers were like, I could have done a better movie than that. They didn't get it. They misunderstood the whole point, like you're saying. It's, yeah. it's clear to us. And so childhood, you know, like I grew up watching Disney movies. It's not like it, it, this is not a fantasy world growing up to be in it. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> like, you just gotta you gotta, have, you gotta have your own. It could be the smallest thing, and, and you could uh, you, you could even talk about your life, and and every mm-hmm. every mind is its own universe, you know. So like maybe somebody wants to hear your story, or someone that has nothing to do with what you're going through, we'll be like, oh, look, they're going through that. Like, so you don't always have to, like, honestly, like a lot of people want to do a Cholo movie. They think, oh, it's all about shooting. It's all about being Dang, tough. Like, that's like, what they label us. Like, but, but this story had like, a, it kind of had like a, a sad ending, but it, it, it teach you a really, really hard lesson. Like that sometimes you just involve one way or another. Mm-hmm. everything has a good ending so just just know? be original have your own story and, and, and that's what we gotta do so Salvador said how hard is it to find people to work with that share the same interests as you it's really hard it's really hard because like we were saying earlier you try to get people on your team and then they want to take more than what than what you have to offer or they want to take your project like a lot of times like people that, that say they want to work with me they don't want to work with me they want to work with me to take what I got and so they can move on. Like, they, they ain't trying to grow with me. I'm not trying to work with people that just want to work with me. I'm trying to grow with people, become a team, because you need a team. Um, you can try to do it by yourself, but at the end of the day... Have a community. Yeah, you, you, you're going to need a network because a lot of times, like I said, like, the people that I started off with, you, you don't see me with them now, and the people that I'm with now... You, you're not going to see me with in the future or you might see me with other people. And, and that's because people always want more than they deserve, you know? Yeah, you, you just got to be really you'll careful. You'll see us more with the public and the po- people's point of view than just being ourselves and being selfish in our own projects. You know, we want to we wanna unite. We want this unity between our people because we actually know, we know that our people is way stronger than what they label us. Who also, you know? and the system's kind of pretty twisted, but I know we're breaking that. We're breaking that wall for for us to become who we are supposed to be in this industry. Okay, yeah, it's a really exciting time, and and again, going back to like when I was your age, you know, twenty years ago, you didn't have Me Too, you didn't have Nalip, you didn't have, uh, Panta, you know, Pantaleon, you didn't have, you know. Diego Luna and Salma Hayek and all these people that are and 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 uh, Eva Longoria that are opening doors you know you look at at Hentified you look at even what's the one um Superstore that America Ferrera produces uh, you know, there's, all these Latinas are really making it in, in producing in Hollywood right now so given that a lot of our you know of, of most of our, our students are, are, are women you know, that's an important message not to miss like when you're talking about five years from now you know, things are going to change. Five years ago, they weren't like they are now. So this is the golden time to, to start that career. And 
it's important that you start yeah. with achievable goals so you build and build and build and not get disappointed. Like some people, they start and they say, I want to make a three hour feature and then um, they get disappointed. But if you start with a one minute piece and then you do a five minute piece and, and, and you know, you learn your equipment, you work with people who know their equipment, yeah. um, you get a lot farther. Hey, Madeline has a question. Yeah, there's, a, there's always a first step to everything. So Madeline, has you know, a um, uh, that's a really interesting question right here. It says, would you say that it's better to take on as many projects as possible, work as much as possible for exposure and get your name out there, or try to prioritize choosing requests that are more authentic to your values and who you are? You know what? I that, mean, like, that, like taking on like a project maybe where you play like a stereotypical character or something like that, something that's like, like more like offensive, but like, but still like, oh, like you're still, getting out there you're still like, getting paid you know something like that versus like like the the cholos i think where it's just you know like you being authentic but like you know something like that like would you say like but that's more like harmful or like you know like oh you're just working like at least like latinos are still out there like i don't really know because like i feel like people have different like mixed emotions about that you know so i just wanted to know what you guys think no you know what you're exactly right like i, I love that question because it's come to that point where, okay, well, maybe we don't got to do this no more. Before, we'll be like, yeah, we'll take on, I would take on so many projects that I kind of, uh, I guess I, I could say regret, but then at the same time, you, 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 I learned from them what not to do. And yeah, at this point, uh, there are some stuff that I won't take because even if the exposure might be big, I might not take it because it's not me. It's not what I want to portray. Yeah, it will give us like a bad reputation as well to kind mm -hmm. of support the wrong idea. Mm -hmm. You know, like I don't do that. Yeah, I don't so, put a price on my, like even yeah. if they offer me 30,000 to kind of like do something negative, like, like, you know, smoke, you know, whatever. Like, I don't want to give out that message to those, you know, that I just want to give out positive moments so, and I do want to keep it authentic. You yeah, know, so, I want to keep it respectful. So now it's more like, now that we got to this point, it's more about quality than quantity. So we are looking at all that, like, and we can't do a video that's gonna like take us back. We're trying to keep it positive. Like, we just got to work with BuzzFeed, and um, that's pretty cool, you know, because it's it's more like a a, a worldwide thing. Then Me Too is more a Latino base, even though it's a lot of other races. But uh, we got to work with BuzzFeed, and I did this video, and it went viral it just it is still going viral we just got released like two weeks ago and buzzfeed hasn't had like something go that viral and i don't know since when but it's with me like like i don't know like it's just so meant to be like i don't know like it's just so crazy like it's something that i don't think a lot of people would understand unless you're going through it but that video is going viral right now and then i thought about it okay well it's talking about like people being drunk and it is a stereotype to have me in there but I don't make it a stereotype. I kind of just be myself. I don't got to talk about gangs or nothing. And, and that kind of show like a, like a light humor in it. You know, we don't focus on me being Hispanic or nothing. I'm just a person there to get to be in the lineup. But I mean, it's just so cool to be, uh, to work with BuzzFeed. Like, and, and I feel like we set foot in there because I ring got one coming too. hasn't came out yet, but we set foot in BuzzFeed and, and 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 the first video that I did with them, it went it went super viral, and it's still going viral right now. Like it's so dope. Like all this is happening, and and it's all because we kept our connections tight. Like the people that got us in is some people that work with. I can't say who they work with, but you see, it's all about keeping your connections tight. Right, who you know, your community, your network, and also this is a really. Oh. Yeah, this is a really important question for women because as a performer, as an artist, as a, as a producer, as a writer, you're going to want to do what, exactly what you said. Make sure that you're in control of your, of your vision, your message, your image, because uh, that's what you're building, your brand. But for women, especially when you look at what's happening with Harvey Weinstein, it could be a whole like, other scene out there. So it's very important that like, when you talk about boundaries, that you know where your boundaries are, you know, professionalism above anything else, but no one to walk away. Because there are other opportunities, always other opportunities, but you want to try to um, keep as many good experiences as possible and figure out when someone is, because like, there's a lot of people in Hollywood that say they're producers, that say they're directors, 
but they're just regular people or they're, they're scammers, you know? So you need to know. Yeah, they will want to use us as to, to kind of maybe portray something negative, but us, mm -hmm. we want to like, we watch where we step now mm -hmm. because the more we get known, we could step on someone that's so delicate and don't want to hear something that's maybe so violent, maybe something that they've never been through before. It would just give us a bad reputation, you know, but it comes to like Latinos, Blacks, Whites, Chinese, Russians, whoever, mm -hmm. you know, to me, people is all people, mm -hmm. you know, but I do feel like us Latinos, we are stronger than what they label us. And we do need to like rise, mm -hmm. you know, and use our words wisely. Yeah. And, no, and the uh, National Association of Latino or La National Association of Latino Independent Producers, NALIP, that's a whole community of people like us who are doing the work, producers, writers, directors, agents, people that work for networks. So really look at NALIP. There's a community of hundreds of people that have the same like goal. Mm -hmm. You were saying, Scar? Oh, no, well, I was just going to say uh, about what you were talking about, that, about taking on, oh, well, what she was saying about taking on certain projects, like, it's got to the point where we can pick and choose and a lot of times there's a lot of people that want to work with us but and they'll pay us but it's, it's kind of like they'll benefit more like but it's something that we don't believe in it's something that we're not passionate about like they want us to work with so many projects like so many products and i'm like well i don't really believe in this product like yeah it's cool i make a little bit of money but it's not me you know like like this product here i believe in it all the way so i'm always posting pictures with the product and i get I get um I get to work with the, my favorite brand, you know. But there's other ones that are kind of like like they want me to do like a marijuana one, and they'll pay me good. But I'm like, okay, I gotta do if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it the right way because actually I do medicate, but I don't do it like to look cool or for other kids. I'm not gonna do it on camera so kids can see me like it's cool. Like we gotta do it, and like, if we're gonna do it, we gotta do it in good taste. No, if we don't you abuse it it's like we work so much we get that uh, we can't sleep so it's just to sleep you know it's not nothing that we're gonna support like oh my god do it too you know but it's not not, not for that and know? and missy marissa has a question yeah. oh missy. missy has this question going back to the cholos try videos a lot has changed in the way that people in the internet reacts to people in the last few years especially with the emergence of cancel culture i was wondering if seeing how that can affect people's careers have you had to become slightly more careful on what you say and put out if not why yeah you know um yeah we do got to be careful on what we say because i wouldn't want to say something that can affect mm -hmm my people you know because they can kind of reflect back to other cultures can kind of re like see me and be like oh they're all the same no like i had said something once that um off camera but they used it as a like a promo they had said that i said that um gang gang banging was a kind of like a style you know um that was just me that was I, I I spoke that in behalf of myself that that was just me because that's something I grew up with that's something I adapted to and that's something all I that's all I knew you know and it wasn't for people to attack me you know that's just what I knew what I grew up with you know and, and it wasn't my fault but I knew that it wasn't right what certain people was doing you know but now I'm here to kind of change that to, now that I have the platform to use that not to go against my people you know we're we're trying to make a difference here. We're trying to break <clears throat> stereotypes and yeah, I, I stop the criticizing yeah. and stuff, you know? Yeah, I haven't heard of that term cancer culture yet, but uh, for the most part, everything has been positive in, in my side. Um, I have said a few things that kind of backfire, but for the most part, we are careful of what we say. We are careful of what we put out. So make sure it's not bad for our, our culture. We try to always keep it positive. And that's one good thing about me too, is that they're not trying to portray any stereotypes. It's all in good fun, it's all clean, and, and we do watch what we say, and we do talk about what we can and what we can't film. So we are um, very careful about that. Yeah, not before we didn't, before we were like, just talk and talk and talk and fuck what we say, fuck what people think and this and that, but we learned that they're so, pe people are so delicate, like, mm -hmm they don't want to hear the truth you know so now we gotta like maybe you know we talk you know but we gotta write certain things down now you know to to have a better perspective on other people's views 
you know. Yeah, and I think that especially when you're working with a medium like video and, and on, especially on the internet where you can say something and a million people are going to see it, you know, you really need to be sensitive about other people's feelings and say it in a way that's not going to hurt someone. There's a thing that, because comedians, a lot of comedians now, like they said the wrong thing and it's ruined their careers that they call it now punching up. Like if you have a, a, a joke and you're making fun of the powerful person, that's different than if you're making fun of the victim or the weaker person. And so comedians don't want to punch down anymore. Like they, they could, but you know, cause it used to be, if you were a mean comedian, you got to get a lot of laughs. That's changed their industry. They're like, Oh, that, that's, that's career suicide to pick on, you know, hurt people. We're going to pick on the powerful people. One little thing bad, then it can mess up your whole career. Mm -hmm. Like you, you cannot be showing your face out there. Cause like me, like what we, us, we're so known, like there's certain, Places we can go in certain places that, you know, I mean, we, we just got to live life. We go everywhere, you know, but we wouldn't want to say something that can affect us or maybe take our life, you know, because people are so sensitive. You know, just being like, you know, it's hard. It's but hard. It like you guys are doing a lot that, you know, that, that your main motivation is positivity. So you guys yeah. do what you have fun with. You make friends. It's all yeah, love. No reason. It's all harm, you know? Yeah. There's no reason to go out there and just make enemies on purpose, you know, like go out and pick fights with people. Just don't even go down that road. Yeah, we don't keep pressing the issue. We just, you know, when there's a hater, we just let them fade away. They're, they're going to fade away regardless. You know, we do what we do. There's, we're not the first, last, middle, whatever. Like we just, we, we're, we're careful. We're careful to our so, Did you want to talk a little bit about what cancel culture is? Yeah, so cancel culture, it's kind of like this thing right now, especially with the internet, like tweets oh. and stuff like that. Yeah, so like they'll be like hashtag you got canceled or like this person's canceled and it goes like viral through the hashtags and stuff. But basically cancel culture oh. is like this culture right now that we have with people who are trying to be like on some social justice stuff you know, politically consciousness, as we're raising the political consciousness right now, there's people who don't understand how to do that. Like for them, like they could just walk away from a situation. And for some of us, like, you know, my brother says some really anti-woman, anti-Latina things, but I'm not going to cancel my brother. I got to work with him and love him still and figure out how I'm going to manage that relationship. Mm -hmm. Well, some of these people don't deal with that stuff. So they just, they just read some books and they get politically, they think they're politically conscious. And then they're like, Oh, you know what? You misspoke on something or you said something wrong and now you're canceled. So that really affects people's careers, especially people who are coming from like, we're not reading stuff to be politically conscious. You know, we're doing the work. We're doing the work like in the communities. We're out here man having those relationships, like, you know, rolling up our sleeves, getting our hands dirty, loving people who are hard to love or, you know, just loving people in whatever circumstances we're in. But then because we don't have we don't always know how to step correctly or what the right word is to say, like saying, you know, um, you know, a trans person, instead of using the word tranny, for example, like that could be something that, you know, you don't have the education, you know, but someone's just going to be like, you got canceled because that's that culture. That right. They and I think that right now there's, there's, there's kind of a line because there's people that are like obviously offensive and then like people will just shut them down. Like Trump says something or what's his name? Uh, Mitch McConnell says something. And then the internet will just flame them like like the black internet does that too like we're not even taking this anymore we're just you know shutting you down and then there's people like you said who who um might have made a mistake because they're they're you know they're, they're not sensitive to the new terms or whatever and they'll get shut down too you know um so there's there's a fine line but but the cancel culture really started in shutting down the people that kind of need to be shut down you know like the ones that are like purposefully offending um yeah, yeah you know everybody the internet especially facebook i don't know what it is like people are so sensitive like they they try to like everybody's so perfect everybody's so politically correct but for the most part we don't have that like we yeah. um it's all love like you know um my sister she's in the navy and she pointed out to me one time that like oh, all the comments are all positive like and i never paid attention to that and i look at the comments and they're all positive like people always like they love what we do like they love what we say and and so far, we I haven't um, come across that, we, but we are careful about what we say and do. And your stuff is really funny. And I think when you work with humor in a positive way, you're not attacking or offending or putting anybody down. You're just celebrating and enjoying what's in front of you. I think one of my favorite, like the hipster clothes. 
trying to be funny, you know, but it just comes out naturally. Like, so people kind of like laugh at it. Like maybe we'll be a little violent along the way. Like, oh, keep messing with me. And you know, like we might say a little truth in there, you know, but, <laughs> you know, like we don't mean no harm, you guys, you know, we're just keeping it real and people find it funny because they find themselves and there's a lot of people that identify. You're going through the same guys. situation, you know. Yeah, there's, what? A of, there's a lot of people that identify with you guys. I mean, you do speak to a large audience that, that like I said, <laughs> there's still not a lot of uh, material out there for Chicanos in, in, in the barrio that, that's authentic, you know. There's, there's, yeah. uh, you know, not, not a lot of us might have had the knowledge too to kind of like precede this, but I mean, we went with it, you know, that's, that's the Latino love, you know, like we just go for it, like what people say, you know, like, I'm, I'm very positive. I, I'm very unspiritual. Um, you know, I care for animals to the smallest little insects and plants, you know, like when they say, well, I'm a vegetarian. I'm like, hey, but you're eating the plant. That's a living thing. You know, <laughs> that's how I'm big. I'm like thinking, you know, like, but, you know, I'm, I'm well, 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 so I was going to say, so, I mean, we're having a really great conversation here and, and I don't want to, you know, uh, take up a lot of your time, but um, I wanted to ask if there's anybody else who had any other questions, but in all the material is really great that you guys are, you're, you're sharing your story. It's an amazing story. You know, you guys are really on the, on the path to greater success. Your attitude is really great. There's a lot of good people out there. I see you guys in the Danny did whole film in the future, you know, so, um, I've with Danny Trejo a few times too. He's like an uncle we never had. <laughs> He's cool. Do you guys, anybody else have any questions? I have a question. Okay, um, <laughs> I wanted to know, like, how do they, how do you guys deal with um, people that have, like, predisposed, like, stereotypes about you just because, like, like, from your Cholo background? How do you deal with people that already have, like, these assumptions about you and don't want to work with you necessarily? And how do you work around that? Well, I, I don't think we, I mean, if they don't want to work with us, we wouldn't even know because they wouldn't even come. I don't think we have dealt with that yet. Uh, a lot of people do want to work with us. Um, it's all positive for them. I mean, if we did, then honestly, like, I mean, I, I, I just, that not everybody's going to agree with you, you know? Um, everybody thinks different. Everybody was raised differently. So a lot of people like cultures, like there's different cultures. Like they don't understand our life living, you oh. know, everybody, they feel like we, like, because they're rich and we minorities, like we, we can't afford certain things that we never see in certain situations and stuff. So I honestly, that whenever there's any type of negative feeling, like I just dust it off. I, I, I let them be, um, I do try to work with them up to the point where we can both work together and not kind of like feeling tense. How can I explain it? It's hard I to explain like, that one. Honestly, we don't, um, I mean, if they wouldn't want to yeah. work with us, they wouldn't really approach us. Just like uh, our friend here, he reached out to us and we were like, sure, like even though we never done this before, I mean, it's pretty cool, you know, something different for us. I'm always like trying new stuff. But as far as people not wanting to work with us, um, we wouldn't know about that because there's a lot of people that want to work with us and that are, are, are on hold waiting to work with us. And Yeah, so we just go towards the positive side, mm -hmm. you know, for all those negative people that want to, like, feel yeah, negative. They, they won't come they, around. They won't come they around. Won't come around, around so, so. And if we have something to that also, it's an educational process, too. Like I said, because people are only used to the stereotypical views of cholos they see in the mainstream movies, that's all they have in their head. So when they meet you guys, it opens up that door. They're like, oh, these are real people just like us. They're not, you know, and when you're dealing with stereotypes, types, and then the actual awesome. people, and when you work with performers, because I remember there was this Mexican actor I met at a film festival like 20 years ago, and his role, he was like always like the super like mean villain, the killer, the drug dealer, and I was really afraid to meet the guy. Um, and then he came to, to talk about his, his kids program. He was like, oh, I teach kids and we got a school, you know, in middle schools and blah, blah, blah. And he was really the nicest guy ever. But if I only knew him from what I saw in his roles, he's really good at playing a mean guy, but that's a role, you know, that's a, and, and it comes from his own life experience. But at the same time, you know, in, in this business, he's a professional first. And it's mm -hmm. his job to do that sometimes, but it's also his job to, um, you know, to do whatever role they want him to do. 
Like, cause I know then later saw him in a comedy, he played a soccer coach, but I hadn't seen that in like all the movies I had seen. It was like that big, scary guy, but he was the nicest guy in the world. Yeah, I mean, honestly, to tell you the truth, uh, I think we're all human, you know? And it's, it's sometimes it's, it's hard to stay, uh, to try to keep that image, you know? You know, like him, like for example, you see him walking down the street, you're like, oh, let me stay away from him, but he goes, Jolly Ranger Candy Roses. So it's like, what? You know, yeah, like, there's that green side of him. Yeah, but you know what? Honestly, like, it's still not safe to be looking like this. And every yeah. day, like, I do come out on the streets. I am scared for my life. Like, it's something that um, is never going to go away unless I change how I look. But I'm yeah. not going to conform or change who I am for anybody. And so I'm just... Um, but you're using... Like, your I'm just... I was going to say, you're using your, your, your own life experience to create art, to make the world a better place, you know? Yeah, but at the same time, I'm always in the streets. Like, I'm all, you're going to seem like, if you lived in L.A., you're going to get a, sight, a scar sighting because I'm always everywhere. Like, yeah, I, we, don't, we don't hide. We're, we're still on the buses. We're still on the metro. If it's easier, because the traffic in L.A. was bad, you know? Like, it'll just take like two hours, and then the metro, like, you get there and go out, you know? So people are like surprised, like, oh my God, what are you guys doing here? Like, man, we in South Central. We we still take the bus. We still at the markets. You know, like we, it's us. It's, it's the everyday life, you know, that we get to go through. But now we're actually known, so we get to love that. You yeah. know, we get love from people now. It's, it's pretty exciting. Like, I, I like, I love, I love the love that the people give. You know, it's, I stay positive, you know? Right it's, on. It's and stuff, so. And they made me want to do more for my community. You know, before I was always into my own, like, I was very afraid. I was always, like, getting bullied and I would stay quiet, you know. But now I got to speak up on what I want. Like, because, like I said, close mouths don't get fed. You know, you want something, you got to go out there and get it. You know, it's a, we all do. Right on. That's a great attitude, great advice. And um, she, she lives by the uh, close mouths don't get fed. But me, I like to go out and take it, you know. Like if someone's not gonna give it to me, you gotta go out and take it because not, you, you know, no, not everybody's gonna give you what you Sorry, want. Sorry, I like to work for me. <laughs> I like a challenge, you know. I love a challenge. So that's really important. It's hard to get talking. You know, I mean, I guess you know that's what we hear. You know, we all stay positive and negative at the same time. Well, it's great advice because especially in this industry, you know, no one's gonna read your mind. If you want something, you have to communicate it. Yeah. You know, along your career, you have to be clear about what you want. And I worked for a for a producer, and he and he had this, this sticker in his in his office that said, "You don't get what you deserve; you get what you ask for." Negotiate. You get you, you get what you negotiate for, and so that's the lesson here: is like, you know, you guys are managing your career and your image and where it's going. You're not just waiting for somebody else to come and tell you, "Hey, we got this role for you." You guys are taking a really really active role, um, but it's important to remember. And you guys work as a team, right? You guys work more or less as a team? Yeah, yeah. We're, we're trying to make it more uh, of a team. And you know what? Um, a lot of times we end up getting stuck in the same project just because we have that look, you know? So we, a lot of times we just end up working together just, just by, um, I can't say coincidence. I mean, this is just, it's just what's happening. You know, we got a good look. And that's why I brought her into this whole industry because she has a great look. And I believe that she could go even further than me, but yeah, like, I, I, I'm a, I need I'm to a work put, hard. I'm gonna put harder, Irene. But. I'm gonna put Irene on blast. Like I feel like she's not living up to her potential. Like I know that she could do so much if, like that's why I brought her in because she has a great look, she has a great attitude. But a lot of times you need that push, and I, Irene is like uh, taking her yeah, time. See, I, I grew up very um, independent. I, I'm very independent. I don't ask nobody for shit. You know, and and that's just me like i like to work for my for what i know mm -hmm. and i like the new experience i challenge myself every day i feel like there shouldn't be no excuses you know within ourselves or blame anybody because it's my life and it's my responsibility to keep moving forward you know and i i, I since i don't like the whole negativity within people i don't want them to see me in any different and i do have stage fright so but once i clear that out i know i'm going to use my word to kind of like become someone bigger and better and use the, the real what, what real world needs to hear because we're also brainwashed with technology 
we only want to hear what we need to hear, you know, but I want to be the one to tell people what they need to hear. Cause I care for my people, not just for my Latinos, but for all nationalities. Like, I don't feel like there's different races. It's just a human race. And with each, we're, we're just so strong. We're stronger than what we ourselves label us our, ourselves, you know, and that we, we might look up to somebody that we want to be, but we have it to ourselves. We have it in us. We just need to find that, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, like, moving like forward, I can tell like, you, like, right now, a lot of people, like, will sell their souls to, like, get a viral video or would, like, want to be in my position. But let me tell you guys, uh, I mean, yeah, it's fun and all, but it's really hard. Like, every single day I wake up, like, feeling a little bit tense and feeling the pressure from the industry. But no one makes you do this. In this industry, you're there because you want to. No one's forcing you to be anywhere in this in this field. So it's all on you. It's on you to go and take it as far as you want to take it. And you can't let nothing get in your way. If it gets in your way, you got to knock it down and keep going if you really want to be in this because it's not going to be easy. Mm. That's great advice. Do you guys, you guys like that advice? Yeah, see some heads nodding there. Um, so we have another question. Are you comfortable sharing your contact information with us? How do we get a hold of you guys to volunteer to be on your film to keep in touch? I'm comfortable sharing my, my social media, but not my social security or anything. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> on Instagram, you guys can follow me on Cali underscore baby 323. Um, I recently deactivated my Facebook, but I will be keeping it up. My name is Irene Soto. I will gladly you know send me a message and i'll follow you guys back with every any type of questions you guys might have like um, my social media is open 24 <laughs> 7. yeah you can you guys can follow me on um on instagram it's scar underscore cholos try or you can just email me at cholos worldwide at gmail.com and I'm always um, open to working with different people, whatever you can be to the people. I can even refer you and send you out. Uh, I'm all about um, helping people out, even though like I'm not like a lot of times people don't pay me, but I open up a lot of doors for a lot of people. And um, that's just the Capricorn in me because Capricorns, we like to help people out. It's just in us. And yeah. Actually, um, I put up a lot of people up on a lot of good projects and uh, and if he can't help you, then he can direct you to someone that can. Exactly. You know, there's always a way. There's always an answer to certain, to your questions. Like, never block yourself out or like, put a brick wall, you know? Like if you want a job, I'll give you a job. But it's up to you to take it. And it's up to you to continue to work with me. Because I got I could give any, anybody a job, but it's up to you. Like, like it, 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 you'll learn real quick if you want it or not. You know? Because, like, if you tell me, oh, I got a camera, okay, I'll bring you out and then it's up to you to continue and if you're not available and you can't make yourself available then okay but if like i continue giving you work and work and you can't make it then that tells you like okay maybe you're not ready now or maybe you're not ready ever or maybe you'll be in the ready in the future but like i said like i um it never hurts to try to move to take that step forward and contact him or me you know, mm-hmm. to kind of process of what you guys are looking for, what you guys want to do with your, yourselves, there's, there's, any questions. There's always jobs out there. Honestly, like we live in the age of social media and all you need is a camera and and everybody wants a cool picture and everybody wants a, some dope footage. And if you got that tool and that equipment, you can go out there. I could send you guys out there. And if you guys have something that um, might... Um, work with a, for us to you you know mm-hmm. like like let us know like we're, we're open to anybody we're not gonna just say no or we even we, we I, I like to work with anybody just like i work with this guy um uh this 17 year old kid that wanted to make this film at mouse i had no idea how, how big it was gonna be. i just looked at this kid like what he wants to do it i looked at his eyes and I couldn't say no to him. Like, yeah, he I, really played his cards right with I just had, you know? I, he, he gave me this, these <laughs> sad puppy eyes. And I just said, yes, okay, I'll do it. Like, you know? Yeah. All right. So, um, thank, thank you. Always a way, you guys. If there's a question, there's always an ask. Yeah, so cholosworldwide at gmail.com. Reach out. Yeah, we want to thank you guys. Sign up. For time. At gmail.com is P-I-N-C-H-E-I-R-E-N-E. 
at gmail.com. Pinchy yeah. Irene at gmail.com? Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. That's awesome. Everyone lo loves that email. <laughs> um, so, so thank you guys. I know what it was until I, I heard it in Spanish, although my bad. <laughs> it just got stuck with me now, though. That's awesome. That's an awesome email. Um, so, uh, so we've got, yeah. you know, if you want to thank everyone, give them a round of applause. Yeah. Really, really. Uh, thank you guys. Inspiring. Very inspiring. Um, thank you. And, and so we're going to continue the class with a, we got a PowerPoint presentation. If you guys feel welcome to stick around. Um, but if you guys want to, you know, uh, if you got somewhere else to go, that's cool too. Um, but the thanks again is really, really wonderful. We'll, and we'll connect. Um, we have a, a record of this we can send. Yeah, we'll send you that we're going to, this is the first time we've done it on Zoom in the uh, coronavirus uh, era. So we're going to, we're technically. I first time being on Zoom and talking to people through the camera. I, I'm not the, I'm telling you, it's not, I'm not the type to kind of like. Well, you did really well. You did great. Yes, you did great. Everybody, everybody say cheese. Look at the country. One, two, three. Cheese. <laughs> I'll review here so I can get everybody's picture here. Yeah. We say cheese. Cheese. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Okay. So thank you guys. Really, really amazing, uh, inspirational information. So, so we're gonna go do uh, our, through our PowerPoint right now. If you guys uh, are ready, do you guys have any final questions before we go um, to the next step? Do you need a break? Um, oh, wait. We're gonna you told us your Capricorn, but what I have about to take my water sign or what? Class real quick, but this is gonna be the. I'm Sagitt I'm in the middle between Scorpio and Sagittarius. Oh, I'm I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're all like lovable and shit. <laughs> Strong and spicy sometimes, but all love, tough love. <laughs> right. And I'm Sagittarius on the cusp of Capricorn, so I'm yeah. right in the middle between you guys. Oh, so. uh, nice. See? It's all, I think a Virgo. Okay, so, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to share the screen now. We're going to do the PowerPoint, uh, and then uh, we're going to talk about the, the class project too. So thank you guys, and thank you guys. You guys have a great day. Stay in school, man. I mean, stay in through the camera because <laughs> this whole right. virus is crazy. Do the dab mm -hmm. when you guys are sneezing. <laughs> or just go, just just go like this, like. Like that's all you gotta do. <laughs> Instead of shaking hands, to... and do the ET when you guys are gonna <laughs> say what's up. All right, you guys. Let's have a good day. Thank you. Yes. You too. Thank you. Bye, man.